Okay, I've got a 2006 Chrysler Town & Country. It has a 3.3 liter V6 in it. And this engine um, has gotten overheated, basically ruined the engine. Um, I think it's got 160,000 miles on it. We're going to be replacing the engine in here, though. Um, it's got a little damage over here on the driver's side, a fender. I'm going to probably put another fender and get a headlight on it. But I wanted to see how difficult this would be. And I'm, I believe the way I'm going to take it out is going to be going through the bottom so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just get started on this today if the weather's gonna permit okay we got the hood up here you'll note that um, this is like even setting under the frame this part of the transmission so you know that you don't have a lot of room there um, you don't have a whole lot of room over here without removing a lot of things <clears throat> and um, even if you got got it where you could bring it up from side to side then you got uh, very little room to get the engine up and out through here you know we could remove the cow but I don't think that they even that would clear up enough room uh, to do what's needed to be done because of the uh, size of the engine it's just going to be nothing but trouble trying to to bring it through the top so it's uh, gonna just we're gonna have to go and drop it down the bottom and we'll uh, get it out of here that way but um, I think we're gonna just get started uh, getting it lifted we'll get it lifted up and get start by getting the getting the wheels off and everything and and going that route and we'll start draining um, the coolant if it needs uh, if any needs to be drained out and we may just remove a few things up here as we go so get start getting the air box and stuff but I think I want to go ahead and work on uh, getting the wheels off and getting it getting it lifted up a little bit and maybe get some fluids out here okay so I've got a 21 here I'm just uh I'm going to go ahead on both sides and just slightly break these lugs loose before I start lifting it up. Like I said, I've got some wheel covers missing. I'm going to have to hunt down some wheel covers for it. Okay, and also before we go to lifting this up, we're going to want to remove this cotter pin and this retaining nut that goes over the axle nut so I'm going to straighten this out this is actually a pretty tough sturdy cotter pin here so I'm going to go ahead and just straighten that out and we'll knock this through okay now we should be able to go ahead and wiggle that out there's our cotter pin and then this will usually just wiggle itself off of there and then there's a little spring that goes behind that and I thought there was also a washer but I think that's behind the nut so now we're going to find the appropriate size we'll get a hold of this and break that loose we'll probably get some penetrating oil on it as well Okay, and I'm going to use a 32 if um, I can get to it where I can see it there and it fits it perfectly okay and you can see I got a uh, breaker bar and a cheater pipe if you don't really get an extension you'll never get this loose unless you got a heavy duty impact so we're going to go ahead and just see how much trouble this is going to give us and so far, it is not budging. So I'm going to reorient it. And uh, we'll go ahead and try it from up here. Okay, and there we go. You can see. And I've got at least 
probably four foot of leverage right there to get that loose and it was really tight so either that or a heavy duty impact but I've got it loose now so I could go ahead and take it off if I want to but I'm just going to leave it there for the time being it's it's loose to where I can get it easily with the ratchet or or anything okay this is how I'm uh, you can use your jack stands blocks whatever you want to use but I've got you can see this cable running here I didn't want my blocks to get on that so I put them back here a little bit and I kind of want to keep everything away from my subframe because if I do have to remove all this I don't want my jack stands or blocks to be up here in the way but I just lifted it right here and put my blocks back here on this just you know you can use blocks and jack stands to go just make sure you got everything safely supported and like I said I got all these loose I can go ahead and remove the wheel and I can remove the um, axle nut there so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and then I'll do the same thing on the other side okay and now that we've got the wheel off we'll just go ahead and finish removing this axle nut here and very important keep up with all your little pieces um, once I get this axle CV axle out I'll put these all the little pieces and washers and everything back on there so it's not getting lost or mixed up good time to look at your brakes while you're in here and I can tell that these are about gone so that's something that will have to be addressed the rotor itself is not that great either So there's that, and there's a little washer behind it there. So we want to keep up with all this stuff. Now, the good sign is, as you can see, if you can see that movement, I'm able to push this back, which means that it's not seized up. So that's a very good thing because it can be difficult sometimes with getting these uh, CV axles unstuck. So, um, we're going to go ahead, I think, and uh, go to the other side and just kind of do the same thing. And then we'll get started on uh, getting us a drain pan and getting this CV axle completely out. Okay, we've got um, some wire here. We're going to go ahead and get this brake caliper, the whole thing. Got a... I believe it's a, a 19 or a 20 I can't remember but um, anyways I'm gonna go ahead and get a hold of this okay so yeah 21 is the best fit for that um, got this one here loose just got this one right down here on the bottom and I'm just using my extended handle ratchet to remove this and once I get the bottom and the top bolt out, we'll go ahead and just strap it up here on to the spring and get it out of the way. Okay, and there's a look at those bolts, pretty good size bolts. Okay, I just went through one of those bolt holes and just wired it right up there. So uh, now that we got that out of the way, we're going to carefully go ahead and get on these. Now... When you're taking um, this loose, this knuckle, do not let the CV drop down or let this tug on it because if you do, it's going to pop it out of its socket and um, then you're going to be having to either reassemble this or get you another CV axle, so be careful with that. Okay, again using my 21 millimeter and my extended handle ratchet and so far I'm not even had to hold the the uh, bolt on this side yet so I'm just working I got the top one off I'm gonna go ahead and get the bottom one here now 
Okay, and these bolts are splined is the reason that they don't spin, so you can actually tighten it without having to hold it. But because it has a tapered end, as long as you don't get real carried away with it, you should be able to knock it back out of there. So just start out tapping it. Don't just don't get carried away and mess up your threads. But it's just got to get it out of the splines there, and it'll come loose. And there's a look at at those. That's what kind of grips in and holds on that side. And there's our two bolts out. We'll just start wiggling this out. So we're going to carefully pull this back and push this back. Do not let the weight of this knuckle fall down and pop this out of the socket. So I'm going to pull, wiggle this out of here carefully while supporting the CV axle. And I'm going to pull this on out while having my hand on this, working this out. So it does not put the weight down and pop my CV axle out of, out of socket there. So, and I also, it's not a good, it's not a bad idea until you get this completely out to get a little bungee strap and even support this and hold it kind of like so to strap it around up here because I have seen them where just the weight, uh, they get worn out and just the weight of the CV alone will just pop these out of their sockets then all you can do is you know if you don't want to fix it which I prefer just to replace them because it's a lot of mess okay and there we have a strap just just to hold it so it's not going to uh, be in any danger of popping out and uh, another thing we're going to do is we're going to take our bolts and just go ahead and put them back to where they go and put the nuts back on there so we're not losing these or mixing them up. Okay, I just put all of my nuts and washers and everything back onto the CV axle so it's not getting lost. Okay, so if you look in here at this CV, you can see these um, kind of areas where it gets kind of flatter, I guess you could say, at the back there, like right in that area. Well, that's where you're going to go in with your little pry bar. Now you'll also notice that it has a collar around it, which makes it a little more difficult. But if you rotate it, like where I've got it there, you can basically come from underneath. I've got a pry bar like this. I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna go in behind. I'm gonna turn, it has a turn in. I'm gonna go in the collar with this and kind of pry in this manner. So I'm coming in underneath, about there, and I'm just prying on it. If you can see what I'm doing there, just rock it back and forth. I got the drip pan, and it's going into that collar. Let me get reoriented so I can show you. But it's going in to that collar with that curved end there. So it gets in behind that, that flat part on that CV there. So then that's all you have to do is just rock it a little bit. And um, some of them can be clipped worse than others. But this one... Uh, appear to be pretty easy I just rocked it back and forth a few times and I've got it out enough I can just pull it out by hand here but have your drain pan and pour up whatever drains out and just put it back in um, this one no it doesn't have a, a plug on it's the only way to drain anymore is by taking the pan and I don't want to mess with that but it's a lot easier if they have a drain plug. You can just drain out, like say, uh, four quarts of this, and just you know put back another four quarts, because then you don't have to worry about it dripping or anything. But um, without removing the pan, which is more messy 
than having a little bit leak out of these CV axles in this case. So anyway, um, this is ready to come out and I can just pull it the rest of the way by hand and I'm going to come up and through here somewhere hopefully. Now I got a bracket here that I may have to actually remove. I got this bracket right here and I think I'm going to have to possibly remove that but I'm gonna I'm gonna work with it here a second if it's not in the way too much I'm gonna try to wiggle it out but you can kind of see how this is kind of in the way here okay I'm I've got my ratchet on here I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this is a 13 millimeter I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this bolt and I'll have enough slack that I should be able to push this little bracket over here <clears throat> I could get the CV axle I've got it enough out of the transmission I could probably get it out later but I don't want to take the chance of when I go into dropping or moving this engine that it's going to damage the boot so I want to make sure that these CVs are always completely out of the way um, got enough to fix don't want to be replacing more stuff Okay, with that bolt out and loose, I had enough wiggle room where I could just take it, pull it right on out of there. It's got this uh, cool little blue clip on the end that helps to hold it in there. But it wasn't very difficult to get this one out. And this is always the one that's clipped and it has the, it's usually pretty hard sometimes. Um, I've seen some um, where I use my big crowbar and there really wouldn't have been a way to get in here with my crowbar. And the way some of them are uh, extremely, extremely stuck in there. And I'd probably been having to remove that collar. And so I'm glad that it came out easily. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead. We'll get over on the other side and we'll get that CV axle out. We'll let this drip a little bit. Okay, so just like I've done on the other side, except I'm going to have to crawl under the vehicle. To get the rest of that out and I guess it is clipped in I didn't think it was because it's not got a bracket but um, another thing I'm gonna do over here all this plastic stuff flopping around here I'm gonna go ahead and take all this off um, because I'm probably gonna see about removing this front bumper it's just gonna make it easier to get in here and get the stuff and get my lift in here so I'm gonna work on taking out all this trim we got some screws and some little pop rivets and stuff and we're going to take this inner fender piece out i mainly need it off of this side this side over here doesn't really matter but um, i may as well just take the whole thing out so it's not getting in the way so i'm going to work on doing that and then we'll get in there and get the rest of the cv out okay with that piece out of the way you can see where the failure comes this pump right here Water pumps has been dripping. Got a pretty good puddle right there. So things like this, when they don't get caught in time, you know where it would have just been a, a you know simple water pump replacement. Maybe not simple, but you know definitely a lot easier than uh, replacing an engine. So it's just you have to catch things before they happen. But um, anyways, we're going to get under here. I'm going to figure out. I'm probably going to have to pop this one out too, this CV. I'm going to get underneath there. But I got this out. You can at least see. You can, you, can, you, know, you can see where the oil's leaking and stuff. With this cover in here, you can't really see nothing that's going on a lot of times or where the problem is. So, And it was torn up here anyways. That particular fender piece wasn't doing a whole lot of good. Okay, so laid up underneath the vehicle, you can see the this bolt's on. All we have to do is take our pry bar and pop this out, push it in that direction. Just using the same pry bar that I had. And you know, you just want to watch out because it's going to leak some fluid. So you just rock this thing back and forth any which way you can get it
and just till you pop it out of there and I'm just kind of on this collar working it on both sides but it's it's coming there and I'm just kind of going to continue rocking it till I get it completely loose here get a good bite on it but that's all I'm going to do is pop that out and then we'll have this all completely loose here okay and as you can see I got that slid out and I could probably leave these CV axles if I wanted to I just don't want to take a chance of like I said them getting damaged um, but if you got something to plug these off with it's ideal so you don't have that fluid because every time you move this it starts dripping <clears throat> but um, as you can see we're gonna have to get under here and remove parts of this um, subframe um, I know at least this piece is looking like it's gonna have to come out but um, we may see um, because it, it looks like it's definitely going to get in the way. I'm probably going to wind up having to remove this. If I had enough room to go forward, which I don't have a whole lot of room, I could avoid removing that. But I don't think it's going to allow me enough room to move the engine forward. So it looks like this is going to have to come off. So may as well get a hold of that other than that there's not a whole lot under here in the way the way the frame is made so i just wish that this piece here like had a brace that was easier to remove than having to take this whole entire piece off under here and i may even have to raise this up some more i don't have a whole lot of room under here as it is but I'm just working on these CVs right now uh, may or may not take the front bumper off I don't know at this point but um, anyways I think the the uh, the next thing I'm going to get on is going to be this piece all these bolts going around here I'm going to remove and so I can get this dropped and out of the way and then we may go ahead and see about um, disconnecting exhaust and stuff and go from there okay now here's a look at your cv axles out got the big long passenger on the bottom and then your driver's side and they both have the same clips holding them in there and they're not very difficult at least they weren't on this one not very difficult to remove that is Okay, so I'm working on this, this subframe piece here, and I'm going to try to remove as little as I can, but you have to hold this part with a wrench, this part of this nut, any way you can get a hold of it. That's a 21, and the bottom is also a 21, so you have to hold that while you get that off there. And... So I'm going to try to just remove this piece here for now, but you see it also goes through this as well. And you got these bolts, you got two up here, one here, you got a couple of 15s here that need to come out. And you got one over here. And there was a, a little clamp 10 millimeter that snapped and broke when I took that loose on that side and then you got some looks like some more tins going through here that we need to get loose so I'm just going to work on taking all these out I've got most of them on the other side over there already so I'm just going to work on getting these out and I'm going to look at it and see how much more room I'm going to need but just as easy as that so i'm just holding the because there's a nut that will spin so i'm holding that with the wrench and then taking this 21 loose i'm holding that, that's all i'm doing okay even with all those bolts out um i'm not going to be able to um there's a couple problems 
For one, there's gonna not still not be enough room over here at this transmission side because even with this plate out of the way, it's still not gonna have enough clearance with this whole subframe. So I'm gonna have to remove the whole subframe and get it off of here and get it out of the way. Um, the other problem is on this, even if I could get this, but it's this uh, body mount right here. For some reason, I don't know what it is holding this piece, but it's stuck. But either way, <clears throat> because of the limited clearance, we're going to have to get the, uh, the whole subframe. So I'm going to go ahead, I think, and lift this up a little more while working here. I just don't have enough room right now um, so we're gonna do that and I'm gonna have to separate and we'll just see what happens here I know that this uh, this stabilizer link and everything is attached to everything I probably at least need to try to disconnect it either here or here but um, and I'm gonna have to get under and see what all is connected so basically we got to get everything under here that's bolting the subframe up and because of the rack and pinion and everything um, that's what's going to have to be done there's just really not enough room it's just uh, very aggravating usually usually um, you can figure out some a little bit easier ways of having to remove so much stuff but there's just simply no way of doing this it's there's no room on the top, there's no room on the bottom. You'd really have to go to removing stuff. And then they got your, I thought about, because this piece up here is removable, but then the the bottom one down there is tack welded. So that might be a problem. Um, unless I, you know, would have to twist it sideways and and everything else to bring it up top because there's not really enough room because of the transmission. But I said I could get everything off the front, including this top piece, but then what would happen is I would probably start hanging up coming out because I'd twist it sideways and it just gets to be a whole nother ordeal because there's just not a lot of room. Now I could take the stuff off the front of this engine and get enough room to probably get it out of here or separate the uh, transmission from the engine. But I think I'm gonna continue on doing it the way I'm doing it because I've already got started on removing the subframe. So I think I'm gonna continue on doing it this way just because I started it that way. But I mean, there's several different ways, you know, you could get it out and it, you know, it's, it's debatable whether it would be any more difficult to do it that way you know by splitting the transmission and the engine just because there's just so little room <clears throat> but I'm gonna work on this subframe and disconnect and stuff okay uh, right now I'm just on here taking this 18 millimeter off of the tie rod I'm just gonna hit this bottom part here um, and knock that out and uh, we got also got an 18 up here. I'm just going to disconnect this here. So I'm just doing that. Um, my rotor seized on here, so I may have to wind up leaving that. I was just trying to get some weight off of this, but uh, the rotor is just rusted and seized on there. So uh, I may have to work on that later. But anyways, I'm just going to do this on both sides, and then we're going to go start taking some more stuff loose. Uh, to get the subframe loose here. Okay, on this you need to hold this inner part with a T40 and take an 18. You can either turn this or turn the wrench, whichever one you want to do. But you have to hold that center, it's just going to spin on you. And I will say these are rusted really bad, having a lot of trouble getting this loose. And I have had to just cut them off before. Just take a hacksaw or whatever and cut them off because you can get these really cheap and they're not worth fussing with and I can tell they're wore out anyway okay so we did get that off we'll have to do the same thing to the other side as far as these rotors go um, 
don't really have to take them off, but I've just got it soaking with the penetrating oil, and I'm just going to tr keep trying them because uh, obviously if they do have to be replaced, it's just going to be something to fight with later. This little bracket just slides into here, as you can see, just take a pry bar or screwdriver and just pop that out of there. Okay, what I'm doing here now with these tie rods and links is I'm just lowering this, um, the subframe here on this side. Now I've got this bolt out of the back, which is right there, and this bolt that's coming out of this right here, as you can see. And I've got it sitting on a jack stand. And what I'm gonna do is go to the other side, do the same thing, I'll put it down on a jack stand and then I'll just get a jack and slowly lower it all the way down to the ground. Now, another thing I'm gonna have to watch out for though is you see we got this cable here that's clipped in right there. So we got to make sure we get all of the cables and stuff loose as we're slowly lowering it down. Okay, we're in here on the inside. Before we can lower this subframe, we got to get in here and take this little collar piece off. There's uh, three of these eight millimeter screws. And uh, we're going to get those loose. And we're just going to pull this collar. We'll pry it off there and so we can get access to the bolt underneath. And you can see this is all ripped a little bit, this rubber piece. Okay, with that pulled up there, you can now see the where the uh, it's going down into the steering component and it's got a bolt. Now, we, are, we will have to rotate the steering wheel so we can get to this bolt that is pinching this on to the splines here. It's on this back side here. I guess we can't see it, so I'm going to rotate the steering wheel around here and I'm also got some something to mark it with so we put this back the same way that it was okay I started to remove this down here but there is like a split pin and it's uh, difficult enough to get in here to this and I couldn't get it to budge with anything I was using. Uh, usually there's just like a bolt with a lock washer or something. In this case, they decided to use that and it makes it more difficult. <clears throat> but if you come back up here, you can disconnect, just loosen off this 13 millimeter. And notice I put a mark on it as well. And we're gonna just try to uh, drop this down here, this whole thing. I don't have it quite loose here, looks like. Okay, so you slide that pin out and the uh, nut just stays on there. There's also, like I said, this little thing here that goes on the end of it. But we've got it loose now and I can, I can push this through just as easily and pull this stuff off of here. So, so we'll just um, go ahead and pull the whole thing through there because it's going to be easier. And we'll put this back on up there so we're not losing it. Okay, I have my jack stands down here. Now I've got this somewhat loose, but I'm still holding. And I'm not sure what's going on. I've took a few um, cables and lines loose is the only thing I've done but I'm going to come up here and take some stuff out of the way so I can get down back in here and see what's going on the other side over here is like completely loose but even with that steering you can see this over here is loose it's just sitting on the jack stand but this other side over here has got some various things that are holding it I'm not really quite sure what's left on there at this point with the uh, steering column and everything off it. I'm gonna take a bunch of this out of the way so I can see, and we'll start with this box. Okay, there's a vacuum tube right here. 
and we're just going to go ahead and lift this up and out. And now we can see a little bit better. We're going to go ahead and remove this. Um, looks like it attaches over here to our throttle cables. I'm going to go ahead and just remove this out of the way. We'll get it disconnected here. Can't see the connector because I'm on the back side. I'm all but certain there's a locking tab, a red locking tab that's got to push to the side there. I'm kind of feeling for it. So you just have to slide, push that over. I was just pushing it from this side. So we got that. Not a bad idea to label stuff as you go, but I said I'm going to start taking some things out of the way. This stuff's going to have to be removed anyways. Just getting everything as I go and uh, try to get down here where I can see what is going on. Um, once we get this subframe out of the way, which it hasn't been real difficult, it's just trying to figure out you know, how to get it out of here, but once it's out of the way, as far as the engine goes, getting it down is going to be relatively simple. Um, just we're going to have to get a few things, you know, um, exhaust, heater core hoses, uh, coolant hoses, and some wires disconnected from the harness and stuff, etc., that are running over here. But uh, it won't be too bad once we get that subframe. So, so I'm gonna think I'm gonna get this off of here next. These uh, throttle cables, you just flip this over like that, and you basically turn this like that and just slip those right out of there. Uh, There's really nothing to it. I'm going to, this usually has a little plastic lock you have to push down on the top and the bottom and then you can just slide it out of there just like that I'm getting a lot of glare on here and the main thing is just to mark or remember which one goes where so you're not getting them mixed up so I'm going to take these loose And we're gonna get these out of the way. We're gonna dis disconnect this little vacuum here. You can see it's kind of together with this. Um, spray lubricant helps out a lot on some of these because they're just really stubborn, but uh, we're gonna get all this loose and hopefully get this out of the way. I'm just gonna keep it together and mark everything as where it went. Just taking the 13 on this bracket loose for this right here now Okay, so we got the whole cruise control off there The only thing we got to do is just separate this clip From the throttle coming through and then we can just get this completely out of the vehicle and out of the way Okay, so <clears throat> I can see I've got some like we got the uh, brake diverter here we need to get the bracket off of there there's a bolt down there it looks like a 13 so we need to watch and get all of these wires and bolts now uh, I didn't even think about it but what's holding me is the uh, the uh, motor mount here it's um, so there's a bolt that goes through the passenger side that is going through the motor mount and uh, of course that's attached to the subframe so that's what's holding it up in the back and that's the only thing that's literally holding this but I want to try to make sure that I've got most all of my um, lines and stuff and I know that the power steering lines I'm gonna to have to get those disconnected but once I start lowering it I'm gonna to try to figure out what the easiest way is gonna to be to do that but um, I'm gonna work on I said getting a few more of these 
bolts and anything that I can see that's going to be attached to this because we can't have this pulling down on any of this brake stuff here. So we're going to get that bolt right down there next. I'm going to start looking and make sure that I haven't missed anything that could get damaged. I'm using a long extension with a swivel to get to that down there, by the way. And there's also another one that is going on the bracket that's kind of hidden back there a little bit. If you can see that, there's another one right there. I have to get that as well. I'm just going to use my swivel just like I did the other. Okay, those two are out of there, so we're just going to do some more looking around and see what we got. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this air box out. I'm just going to loosen the band here and pop this off. And it looks like we got one connector. This will just enable me to see, push that lock back. This will enable me to see on this side a little bit better. Either an eight or a flat. And we've got some tens, or one ten here. And may have something else, I don't know. It looks like that's about it. We should be able to pull this whole box out here just so we can kind of see something. Okay, with this one 10 millimeter, that whole air box will pull up and off there. There's like a couple of like rubber grommets and you just lift the whole thing up and off of there. So we can see a little bit more over here than we could. Um, it may not help out a lot for the subframe, but we can see a little bit more than we could. So I think we're going to climb back underneath and we'll do some more looking here, see what else we got and where it's going to be the easiest to disconnect these um, power steering lines and uh, maybe able to lower it a little bit though to uh, finish connecting to make it a little easier. Okay, there's a heat shield back there that is, looks like it's got a 10 millimeter on the top there i'm gonna to have to get that out because it's blocking me getting to the bolt on the passenger side for that mount so i need to get that out and there's probably going to be another bolt or so behind it um <clears throat> i think i'm gonna wait till i get it lowered a little bit to take any more loose um, the only other thing that i popped out was this cable here i think that i can get to most everything else when i start lowering it um, now I can tell exactly what's going to need to come off. I'm just going to lower it down onto something here and roll it out. But um, anyways, I got to get that uh, those 10 millimeters for that heat shield right there before I can get that bolt out. Okay, I've just um, got the heat shield loose. I'm just come over here to this side. And I'm just kind of bent that back a little bit. It's got a little like clip on tab there. So I just bent it back out of the way. So there's the bolt. I'm going to go ahead and get at it from right here and work it loose next. And uh, I'll work on getting this uh, set down onto the, I see I've got the jack stand over there. So it's not going to be going anywhere. Okay, I've got my jack placed on this side so I can take a little tension off of this here. And now I'm just getting ready to finish pulling that through. So there's that out. So now we can go ahead and start lowering this down here. Okay, I'm just utilizing the jack to lower it down on to my little mover's dolly. Just I got that from Harbor Freight. I put a couple two by fours on it to make it a little sturdier. I've moved engines and transmissions and everything with it. <clears throat> and it does a pretty good job for $11. Uh, this side is pretty good. I've got everything clear. Uh, there's still slack in that right there, which it'll make it much easier now that I know I'm able to lower it down here like so. 
Um, and I'll, I don't know if I was mentioning earlier, but all those bolts I took out were unnecessary because I couldn't do it the way I was wanting to do it. So you don't need to take but just those four um, body mounts plus uh, you're getting the, the column loose. So that was an unnecessary step. So I'll have to put those back in. Okay, you can see these lines right here onto the power steering. I'm gonna disconnect those there. Let's get a crescent or whatever and get those disconnected right there. <clears throat> and uh, we should have about everything else. Looks like this little box has a bolt going to the back of that. I need to get that off of there, that 13 you can see right there. Other than that, it looks like I about got everything. And so I've got it on my dolly. Once I get this, these power steering hoses, we'll just, we'll roll this thing out of here one way or the other. I may have to lift the vehicle up a little bit more over here, but we'll try to roll it out one side or the other, I guess. Okay, we're about to get it. Um, <clears throat> so the lines are off. This little cooler's just laying back over there out of the way. It's disconnected from the rack and the bracket and subframe. Uh, this little thing, I took three 13 millimeter bolts out and so I could get over here and see what was going on with it. And I don't think I'm gonna take it loose right here and just leave it laying here. And then this hose runs up here to this contraption and back up here. So I'm gonna take it loose here and just feed that hose back under it, I'm hoping. I may have to disconnect it somewhere else. I'm really not sure. I'm hoping that I can just shove that kind of out of there, but if I have to, I'll I'll take it loose somewhere else to, to get it out of the way. But that's the only thing that's holding me up at this point is just this and these hoses running in under here. And you wanna definitely take special note as to where these are running so you get them back in the same location okay i wound up having to take these hoses off and i like to put some more clamps back this one here didn't break but the other one did but i just put them back where they go but it wouldn't fit through that square part there so i had to go through the bottom because it's attached to this bracket now i suppose i could have got it off the bracket but anyways, it's out of the way, so I'm going to do one last look over, but it looks like we've got everything. I want to make sure there's nothing that's going to hang up, and I think I'm going to try to go out. I may try to just come out this side with it. I'm just going to roll it like right out this way. I'm going to have to raise it up a little bit more, though. Okay, so we just blocked it up a little bit more here. As you can see, and we've, we've got room to just angle that column. We're just going to come out this side. Everything's loose. So we're going to go ahead and roll it out, and then we'll lower it back down. So this uh, dolly makes it really easy to move this thing. It doesn't take a lot. And uh, other than just my rotors dragging out here but i'm just going to push this thing off to the side out of the way now okay and here's a view of this thing out of the vehicle of course at this point it would make it real easy to change your rack and pinion but um once you know what to take loose on this uh, I said I took more bolts because I was trying to do it in an easier way and it turned out to be more difficult that way and I'll have to put those bolts back in before I stick it under the car but you just have the these two areas plus taking your links and stuff off from the outside and then the motor mount and the column and a few other cables and stuff but not a big deal And there she is. 
and it's going to make it a big difference getting under here now being able to drop that engine out none of this will be in the way and plus it'll make it easier getting to the exhaust and stuff back there so this is my opinion the, the toughest part right here okay with the um, subframe out I'm going to go ahead and focus my attention back up here I just need to get some stuff removed um, <clears throat> if you hadn't drained your coolant already you'll want to go ahead and, and do that I'm fixing to start disconnecting these hoses the heater hoses um, these wires that are running over in to the box here we're going to have to get disconnected from various places or we're going to have to disconnect it from the engine okay this little uh, fuse box has these things on this side you have to reach under and push that up to pop it off because it locks that down one of them flew down in there I'm not worried about it uh, on this side over here you got to uh, pry that way to get this up now we should be able to unhinge this at the very least and we can get to our connectors because you can see we got to get to um, this power connector here it's got a, it looks like a slide lock that's going to have to release and then we have some other connectors like this one that's running up to here and there appears to be locks on all these so we have to pull these locks up with a pick tool or a screwdriver we have to get these <clears throat> they're pretty self-explanatory where they go but Nevertheless, we've got to get these loose so we can drape the harness back over here when we lower the vehicle Unless you want to take every single thing off of the vehicle While it's in the or off of the engine while it's in there and I do not So we need to get And this also there's a wire running down here this fender well I'm going to yank this Little plastic piece off of here because it's running down here. There may be another computer box down here I don't know but we're going to get all of these wires loose. That's what I'm working on right now. And um, once we get this over here, um, it's just a matter of probably getting a few grounds and stuff. The AC compressor, uh, the AC was actually working uh, really good on this thing. So I'm going to take the compressor off of the engine and hopefully not disturb it uh, and then just to reattach it so anyways i'm going to work on these for now and uh then i'll move on from there okay make sure this lock is pulled up far enough for whatever reason mine wouldn't release and it the little clip broke see where it hooks right there and it broke trying to get it out of there but you know it's the way it is sometimes Okay, so I popped those two out of there, and those, this one wasn't too bad, but those locks, this one and that one over there were really no joke. And then I popped it up out of here. Um, I don't know. We will find out if there's anything else. It looks like we do have another couple more wires here so I got this one it may be running I don't know if that's running to the engine though so I'm gonna leave that for now so we're gonna put that back we got these loose I think that that's gonna be okay we're gonna get this ground here loose I'm gonna pop this up Right here, we'll label these so we get them back and then we'll pump this thing down in the fender well here. But we're getting it. Okay, so we're over here uh, disconnecting these connectors that are going into this computer box here. And there's a couple others there. We're just going through the job of tediously labeling each and every one of these. And uh, these connectors connecting 
this wire to this wire and there's a lot of little clips and stuff that you have to either tear the tape or uh, pull the little tabs sometimes the tabs will break so I'll just pull the tape and get them off that way because they really go overboard with these clips and stuff you could spend a day's time just removing wires and clips but uh, there's another wire running up under the fender over to here I'll have to get to that but I'm just trying to get a little bit at a time here to kind of make sense of it so this one is loose we can shove it back up and through or come from the top and pull it through this little wire runs around the back's got another clip over there I'm gonna have to tear the tape over there I'm gonna have to take this box off which I don't want to do this horn was connected up here it was kind of in my way I took that down um, but these connectors uh, let me find one here that I can show you you just pull back the ones that go into the computer box you just pull back on this tab and then push down really hard you'll hear it click and then you can pull it directly off <clears throat> so those are all disconnected and labeled so that's what I'm working on at the moment Okay, and you can see with that loose from the computer box, we've got it pulled up and out of here, out of the way. So now we've got to just contend with the wires that are coming off of the, um, the transmission and stuff there. So we're going to get those and just everything that we need to get disconnected to drop this down, we are going to disconnect and hopefully um, so, so once you kind of make sense of it you can figure out you know, what needs to be removed and what don't so you're doing as little work as possible okay now see this wire here it look it's looking like this wire is actually going to stay I don't think that one's going to need to be removed uh, it looks like it goes and connects to the fans and it comes in here but I don't see any connection that's uh, going to the engine so I think that maybe everything we've got the the wires going to the transmission here we got that loose we'll just want to make sure that these are safely out of the way when we go to lowering it we don't want to ruin our harness so we'll make sure that they're pulled up and out of the way but um, it looks like we got everything over here. I'm going to go back up top and we'll just focus our attention up here. This right here, it's usually best to spray a little spray lubricant or something on here, but this will pop right off. And then all we got to do is come back here and push the tabs in on both sides. And that will push right through. You can see, I can push those in with my finger. It'll just push right straight back. So we'll go ahead and, and get some spray lubricant and pop that up first. This is our shifter cable. Okay, I've actually got some spreader pliers. I'm going to see if I can show you if this will pop off of here. There we go. Okay, and with that popped up, we'll just come back here, like I've shown you, push those tabs in, squeeze them in with your thumb or whatever. And you just give that a push back and it will lift right up and off there so main thing with this is just keep it out of the way so it's not getting hung up and messed up that's all that holds that on there and I believe we probably got some some wires back there I'm seeing one in particular right there that I need to get disconnected it looks like so I'm gonna try to get back there and get that um, we need to get it go ahead and get our heater hoses off I guess we can get those while we're up here and uh, usually I just like to take them loose wherever it's gonna be the easiest and it looks to me like we'll, we'll disconnect it here and then we'll disconnect it right there 
just because getting up next to the firewall is just a lot more difficult. There's no sense in it. We'll take them loose here. Now these things will be stuck. You will probably need to get a screwdriver, some penetrating oil under it after, even after you get this clamp off because they just stick and they're just really something else. So that's what I'm going to work on and we'll mark and label those. Okay, now this is what I'm using to push this off here. Just getting in here with this long pry bar and just getting on that and just give it a push. I put a little spray lubricant on there. But there we go. And the other one will be a little bit different, but we'll try to get it as best we can. I can't really get my long one in there so I'll have to go in with a short screwdriver and just kind of come from underneath and work it loose as best as I can there okay right here we got a clamp our power steering reservoir we'll go ahead and just take this hose loose all this down here is loose we'll go ahead and take this loose right here so you'll notice with the subframe loose all this is going to go pretty quick now um, you know other than just getting the wires um, and stuff in the hoses we don't have a whole lot and then we've only got like three mounts left we got one up here in the center and then we got the one on this end and this end and uh, essentially we'll come out here you know and start taking it loose and we'll slowly you know get it lowered down now you could do this one or two ways uh, you know you could just lower your vehicle down on to your movers dolly or whatever you're going to use or you could uh, use a, a lift or hoy, engine hoist like I'm, I'm probably going to do that and just lower it down onto it with that either way you're going to you can do it but you're going to have to lift the uh, van up to slide this engine out so either way it doesn't really matter but um i'm going to continue on looking here we're just going to get things uh one thing at a time i think we'll go ahead and get this upper coolant hose right here get it out of the way and uh, we got the lower disconnected that's how we drained it out down there over on the passenger side <clears throat> so I mean basically like I said th there's nothing to this once you get the subframe out there's nothing to this part it's just a lot of a lot of busy work and tedious stuff just make sure to label everything so you ain't forgetting where your clips go your connectors and everything Okay, I'm working over here on a few things. There, um, the fuel line here is easy to disconnect from right there. You just push that black tab back in towards this or shove this inward while you're pushing in on that and you'll just pull it right off. Very easy, just pull it back out of your way. I just disconnected the um, AC compressor here. You just pull up on that, like so, pop that off there. Working on disconnecting this little button that's going in here because this all attaches to the engine. And this part I'm removing, uh, this will actually stay for now so I don't have to disconnect the wire from that. It clips in here runs back behind here just remember where stuff goes and I disconnected this it's got a safety lock and attaches right there make sure to label stuff so you're not getting confused what goes where and you know to help keep a good mental note of where stuff routes as well so you get it back you know Last thing you want to do is get it back together and and uh, get something rubbing against something or whatever. And then you got a situation. So try to remember where stuff goes. So we got those loose and we'll put those back over here. And so there's really not a lot up here. Now, because the, the AC, I don't want to mess the AC up. I'm going to have to remove the AC compressor. Now in order to do that, I'm gonna have to remove these things up here. I'm gonna have to remove this, I'm gonna have to remove the alternator, 
Um, and then hopefully I'll be able to slip it up as I'm taking the engine down because I don't want to disturb the AC because it's actually working pretty good. Um, so I'm going to have to get on the tensioner and I can show you. And as you can see, we got all kinds of room under here now. I've got the exhaust up there sprayed down with uh, penetrating oil. And we're going to try to get that loose. Now you'll notice that there are, you see that little tab, that piece of metal? That's like an anti-rotation tab. Those more than likely will be rusted and useless. So don't rely on them. You'll probably put a wrench on it. So anyways, here is the tensioner. It's got a half inch. As you can see, there is literally no room to get a normal size wrench in there. So unless you got a flat one, you're not getting in there in that. What I'm going to do is get a hold of that square part with a uh, crescent wrench. So I'm just going to get a hold of this part here somehow, some way with a crescent because I don't have anything narrow enough to get in there. And I need to get the AC compressor and stuff loose. So I might as well go ahead and work on that. Really got virtually nothing left over here. Everything is disconnected. The wires, there's really nothing over here. I was just doing a look over. Uh, so other than the exhaust and uh, the motor mounts and stuff, there's really not anything left, but I do need to get this loose. So I'm gonna work on that. You can see we've got a couple of bolts here and here holding it, but we got to get this belt off first. So I'm going to work on that tensioner there. We'll get the belt off. We'll get the alternator off. And, uh, you know, that's the price you pay for, you know, I don't want to have to uh, lose the Freon and all that. And of course, you'd want to have it vacuumed out, but I can get it out of here. I've done this on others before, and it'll work. Okay, I realize for now that I have no tool to actually, I can't get in there with a the crescent. So what I'm going to have to do is once I start lowering the uh, engine down, I'll have to get to that tensioner. I just, I don't have anything to get in there with. There's not enough room. There's like no clearance whatsoever without having a slim bar. So I'm going to hop on over here onto the exhaust and get that disconnected. And I think we're going to get rigged up with the the uh, engine lift and go ahead and start lowering this thing down a little bit and I'll get I'll worry about getting those getting those off as I lower it down because I just can't get to that tension or where it's at so anyways um, I've got a slim 3 8 tool but I don't have a half inch so I guess I need to invest in one of those well this pipe here looks really bad i've noticed it's like dented it's all rusted up it's in pretty bad shape too i'm kind of hoping that the uh, replacement engine comes with this or i'm gonna have to hunt another one of these things down so anyways i'm gonna get on that exhaust there Okay, I've been working on this exhaust here. Uh, these have not been fun. The anti-rotation tabs on the lower two were rusted. This one's off the top. This is the only one that come out intact. I was using a uh, half inch to get a hold of this. These are really rusty and there's hardly anything to get a hold of. Now, um, one of those kits that are made to take off the rounded out bolts would probably be ideal in this situation. I don't have one of those kits, but because of the rust, that's been the difficulty. The bolt side on the lower ones were so bad that I couldn't turn the bolt here. I could barely hold it, and I was holding it with uh, vice grips or whatever. And then I was turning it from the other side, which was a 14. And they're extremely difficult to get loose. And basically, the bottom tabs were rusted, so I just spun the whole thing around and finished bending the little tab off. The only one I have left is this one up here. And as you can see, it is like rounding off. So 
the um, the tab the good news is that the tabs up on the top are holding up a little bit so I'm gonna try to work on getting that the bolt side loose because it's so it's so difficult to get to that 14 nut on the back side so um, so this is like the 14 anti-rotation nut and it's just so difficult to get up there um, I can't imagine removing this having to remove this with the uh, subframe there's just no way so that's what I'm working on I want to finish getting that one and we'll have the exhaust loose and what I'll do is just go back with some stainless steel or something um, <clears throat> in most cases the anti-rotation tabs are useless by the time you need to use them because they've done rusted and come apart and they're just they're useless and even the bolts I mean the bolts uh, like the heads on the other bolts were just gone they weren't very good bolts and they're just completely gone so I'm gonna work on trying to get this last one out here and getting this loose and I think the next thing we got a bracket as you can see here I think I don't know the sizes but we're gonna take these bolts out there are three big ones here and then one here we're going to take this off and we've got this little um i believe these are tens down here we're going to get down here and we're going to get to our flywheel or flex plate bolts and um, <clears throat> that should about be it we'll want to make sure we get any lower bolts that are going to be hard to get to as well when we go to set it on the um the uh, dolly um, so anyways that's what I'm gonna do next and we'll get those out and then we'll probably start working on lowering this thing down so I can get my AC compressor and stuff off but yeah I've been uh, held up here for a minute working on this okay I'm using a 12 millimeter socket on this side it's actually working pretty good the ones up top weren't rounded as bad as the bottom ones so you may be better off just using a six-sided socket and that's what I got this one loose up here with and it was not in real good shape itself and is a little bit rounded okay and we have success it is loose now so uh, I guess the next thing we're gonna do is uh, make sure we've got everything else disconnected and um, so we'll go ahead, like I said, I want to get this bracket here off next. And then we'll work on getting this little plate under here. You see the little tins. Um, and we may have to remove, I need to get this plate out to get to my flex plate torque converter bolts. So that's what I'm going to be working on. Okay, this was a 15 and these two, and this one over here was an 18. And I'm going to get on these right here these uh, these tins and see what it's going to take to get that little piece out of there okay with those two tins and that bolt over here that just comes right out of there and you can see we got plenty of room there's the first bolt right there um, I'm going to figure out what size it is you definitely want to uh, I don't think I can get in here with my slim ratchet I might I might be able to if you can use a six-sided you're better off because sometimes these are ridiculous tight so we'll see um, we'll also have to get get over here and turn this um, this crank around to get the bolts as we need them we got the first one we'll go ahead and work on that getting that one out and like I said also any bolts that are going to be down low um, that's going to keep me from separating this like I can see there's a bolt in behind here so what I want to do is actually take this mount off completely if I can easily and uh, get that bolt back in behind there because I don't want to once I've got it setting on something it's going to be harder to get to a little bit but you know either way I can get it I like to try to get most of the bolts down low but if this is too much trouble to get to out here I may just wait because <clears throat> it wouldn't be but another step to pop this off from the outside and it's actually 
because it bolts up here it may be more difficult so it may not do that <clears throat> so I'm gonna get on these these right here okay there's not a lot of room in here um, I remembered I had one of these 18s that I took and ground down uh, just an 18 millimeter socket and I do have the slim profile ratchet that I got from Harbor Freight but it's like there's still just barely enough room to get in here with it but if you try to use a wrench uh, it's a good possibility of rounding these nuts off so I like to start in here with this you're not going to be able to back it all the way out that you can get it broke loose you see it fits on there nicely I've got a little bit of room where I can loosen it off and I'm gonna have to get over here and hold with my 15 millimeter we're gonna get over here I've got a uh, long ratchet here we're gonna hold it while we get this here loose and that's all there is to it and we're going to just keep rotating it around till we get all four of these uh, 18 millimeter flex plate torque converter bolts out so so this thing is about a little over a foot long too so it it's enables me to get a little uh, leverage on it so but um, you're definitely going to need something slim and low profile I don't recommend a wrench in this case because it's a good way to round the, the nuts off so definitely don't go that route if you can avoid it. Just get you a slim wrench and take you an 18, grind it down, do whatever you need to do with it to get it to fit in there. Okay, and I'll forewarn you, these are extremely tight. You see how much I took it loose and then I had to get this out of here because I don't have a lot of room. So also having to hold it, the ratchet on the other side near the crank there, but uh, I'll have to get my wrench and get it the rest of the way but once it's loose I'm not in the risk of rounding this thing off so we'll go ahead and just get the first one out but really tight in there that Loctite really holds at first so we'll go ahead and rotate this around to the next one Okay, you'll notice in this area there's slightly a little bit more room than there is back here. It's why I'm like up here in this area. Okay, I just got the second one out there. I'm just going to rotate it on around to the next. Okay, we got the third one out, and uh, now we're down to the last one up here. I'm just going to rotate this around and get that one. Okay, and there's the last one out. Uh, so we're all finished up with, uh, with those. Um, so I think that's everything we need to get um, because it's going to be too difficult and we're just going to take this bolt and lower it. Well actually um, we're going to take this loose here when we lower it and just take that whole mount and drop it down. So that's going to do it for that. We got our exhaust loose. Um, the only other thing to contend with is getting this uh, belt which I can't get until I lower it some. Now the Exhaust is going to want to hit when this comes down and I don't have a lot of room to move it forward So I may go back there and uh, there's like just rubber hangers. I may pull it back slightly Just go to the back and just pull this back a few inches I just don't want this thing to be trying to hang up and messing with that when I'm trying to lower it down But other than that we've uh, pretty well got everything I think I'm going to take care of that exhaust and I'm going to go ahead and probably take this loose here these three out that'll allow that to come down and then we'll still got the the mount up here and the one down by the transmission so it's not going to fall we'll go ahead and get this out of the way and then we can get rigged up with the lift and uh, work on uh, strapping this thing up lowering it down because so I think we've got pretty much everything which has not been a whole lot really once we got the subframe and stuff out there's not been a whole lot but anyways I'll um, pull the exhaust back and then I think we'll get on this right here 
Okay, so I'm on here taking these hangers loose. Some of these uh, with a little white lithium will slip out and some will not. The other side over here I got to slip out. You can see the ones down there. There's like uh, one down there and two, one on each side of this muffler. And it gives me enough room. Got it kind of sitting on a tire here. And it gives me enough room to slide it back. So it's not gonna be in my way any. But these, uh, if you put grease on these usually, you can slip them out and some of them won't. They're just, they'll try to come apart on you. So they're, they're a little bit ridiculous on this particular vehicle. Okay, as you can see, we got the exhaust nicely pushed back out of the way. A little bit of, little bit of effort, but it's worth it to have that one more thing out of the way. Okay, so we're gonna work on this mount. We're gonna get these three 15 millimeters out of here. Okay, now the engine may move, so don't be right underneath this when you're taking these loose, because it may twist a little bit. Okay, so there, that is loose. Now we just got the, uh, the mounts on the uh, transmission and the engine side. I'm gonna go ahead and get my lift out here. Um, that's everything that I need to do under here. So we're gonna go ahead and start lowering this down onto our dolly. Okay, um, if you ever get to the scrap yard, get you some old seat belts. These work really good. You can double them up. Whatever you feel like you need to do. Um, I'm going to be going in over here on this side, I think. I'm going to get back in under that mount. And then I might get in under this pipe here or something. <clears throat> this pipe should be pretty strong. So that's my plan. Um, it's the easiest thing to get a hold of. So we're gonna go under here and loop it and come up over the engine and loop it under this mount here. And we're just gonna be letting it down onto my, my dolly. Now one of the problems, um, that's why you can't have a very big dolly, is the, the spread on the lift, it starts hitting so, uh, but that thing actually works really well. I've used it several times. So I'm gonna get these straps hooked up here next. Okay, so we got it said looped just down and under that and coming back up. Um, we're gonna be removing this to lower it. <clears throat> and it over here we'll be taking the bolt out of the fender well and then this will drop straight down I got this looped under here I want the tension to hit up against something solid you gotta watch your straps you don't want to get up against something's gonna break something anyway um, and I've got enough slack when I get some tension on it I'll have enough where I can lower the boom hopefully without any problems here get it lowered down enough to get it down onto my dolly. I don't really want to have to remove anything up here. I'll, I'll lower the van before I go through all that trouble. So anyways, I'm going to get rigged up and get some tension on it here. And we're going to have to slowly go down because like I said, I have to get to the tensioner for the belt. And uh, go from there. Okay, we got the mover's dolly in place. Let's get it, try to get it centered up a little bit uh, where it'll, the oil pan will kind of go down in there and hopefully it'll stabilize. Usually it's not a problem with the transmission and everything attached. Um, so we're gonna just start lowering it down slowly and I have to get the tensioner and stuff to be able to get the the AC compressor. I can't go real far because I don't have a whole lot of slack in my lines and stuff here. So I'm gonna have to kind of ease it down. Um, I may go ahead and work on removing this, however, because I think that's gonna be in my way and at the very least get the plugs and stuff off of the alternator. OK, 
Okay, the 13 millimeter nut to get this power wire, this clip going to the back of the alternator. There's supposed to be a safety lock, red lock, but it was previously removed, I guess. So we got those disconnected and uh, so I'm just trying to get everything out of the way. Uh, looks like I can't completely remove this without removing the uh, alternator so I'm in kind of a catch-22 there um, so I may have to go ahead and start lowering it before I can get to this unless I can figure something else out here I could go ahead and start removing the bolts and just get the tension off that way so I'm not having to mess with it so much while it's on the lift. So we'll figure out what I can do here. Okay, um, there's two bolts <clears throat> coming through the front of this alternator and there's one bolt right down here that I am taking loose, a 15. And it's basically just taking tension off. There's not much on it now. <clears throat> I also went ahead and took these two right here for the AC and hopefully I'll get this loose I'll just slip that off of there so anyways I'm just finished taking that one right down there that 15 and this will be loose up here okay the two bolts on this here are 10 millimeters and uh, we'll take it out of the way. I can't even get the alternator up through here with that in the way. Okay, the bolts are out of there. This is loose. We're going to take it loose up here on this intake, the two eight millimeters. Go ahead and take both of those loose. And we'll pop this whole thing up and out of the way. Okay, so the EGR is out of the way. We'll put our bolts back where they go as well. And we should be able to get this out of here. We'll get this set aside. Okay, we've got a wire connector here for the safety lock. Those things sometimes you just can't hardly get them with your fingers. <clears throat> but anyways, I'm going to get that. It looks like we've got another bolt hidden somewhere along with the two that's in the front there. I'm going to See if I can find that in all this greasy mess here. Okay, on top of the two nuts in the front of the AC compressor, there's a bolt on the top here. There's also a bolt on the bottom. I'll show you that in a second. They really go overboard bolting these AC compressors down. Okay, and here's the bolt in the bottom here. So now we got this completely loose. We're pretty much just slide off here. I'm gonna get a uh, bungee cord and just kind of pull it up but we've got enough room at this point that we should clear everything here coming up we should be able to get it up here and hopefully get it out of the way and get the wires out of the way a little bit here so I'm gonna work on that Okay, I just got it strapped there so it's not just dangling on the Freon. It's actually got quite a bit of slack. I'm going to go <clears throat> down, I believe, before I start trying to come up with it. I um, need to make sure that I've got all of the wires and stuff that are going to be out of the way. And uh, I believe I'm going to go ahead and get hooked up to it. So I've got the dolly under here. We're just going to get hooked up to it with the lift and try to go ahead and see if we can't get this lowered down. We don't have very far to go. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take these bolts here out, these three, and that will uh, release this over here once we get tension on it. And then we'll take the bolt from the fender well out here that you can see right through there we'll take that it looks like a 15 so once we get rigged up to it we'll go ahead and uh, start taking those mounts well, because of the amount of stretch in these um, 
straps here I actually didn't need that much slack I just hooked it directly to the straps that I've got here and uh, this is going to be enough so I can drop it down uh, I'm going to go ahead I've got it got the tension on it at this point <coughs> and um, I'm going to go ahead and take this loose up over here first and then I think I will get on the other side and start taking that tension and it may rock back and forth or one side or the other but with the most of my weight's going to be on this side over here the transmission so it may in fact try to drop down here so <clears throat> didn't really have anything to get a hold of i would have liked to have gotten a hold of it way over here but i couldn't do that so anyways i may put another block four by four under there just so if it does try to drop down too much when i take this loose it'll it'll hit on that block but um uh, it's not very high up here anyway so I'm gonna go ahead and get the motor mounts loose okay I lowered the van down just a little bit see I've got it lined up I got an extra 2x4 to get above this so it's not hitting on my lift by chance I've got it extended out to the half ton so I'm not getting caught up in here <coughs> And I've got a board across there and it doesn't have like I said very far to even drop down so I'm gonna go ahead I've got tension on it you gotta be real careful I broke the pull pack because the strap slipped off over here said so anything that can get broken will get broken if you're not careful so you got to be real cautious when you're rigging up your straps and stuff Okay, this is a 15 over here. This mount, I'm gonna take this and loose first. And just got a little bit of an extension to get it out here past the fender. Okay, because of the weight difference on both sides, I had to take a jack and lift this slightly to be able to get this bolt out right here because it wanted to drop down all the weight over here. So I'm gonna slowly just lower it down on to my mover's dolly there. Okay, I just got the three 15s. Out of this right here, we're just getting ready to go ahead and start lowering it. And I'm gonna carefully make sure and guide my AC compressor out of the way so it's not getting in a bind here as I'm just slowly going down with it. Okay, so it's completely lowered down on here. It's pretty stable considering that it's just sitting on that. Um, I'm gonna start lifting the vehicle back up. It'll definitely have to come back you know out of here and and then we're just gonna have to keep going up until we can we can get this out of here and you see how high it is so we're gonna have to go up slowly uh, go up looks like the AC compressor is the least of my worries here it doesn't look like it's in the way at all so we're just gonna slowly go up block at a time and from side to side and we get it up high enough here and uh, I can go ahead and disconnect this it's sitting on the dolly fine okay the brake line was trying to hang up on the engine that's the importance of going slow we now have that above the mount and stuff so we're just slowly taking one side up at a time making sure everything's going to clear and that we didn't forget anything Okay, one thing I did fail to do was disconnect these uh, transmission lines here. So I need to go ahead and do that before I break these. And I believe they got like a quick disconnect on them there. Okay, once you pop that little plastic cap back there, you got to get on here with a pick tool and pop this little clip off. And uh, try not to lose it. You can see it just got to pop it off of there. Yeah, there's all it is. You got two of those, and that line will wiggle right out of there. And just got to get both of those. Okay, the first one came off easy. This other one's not wanting to come off, and this fill tube for the transmission's right uh, directly in the way there, so I can't get to it. Um, worst case, you just take these nuts off. But this one's still not wanting to come out. And wear some gloves. This flare fitting 
connector here is razor sharp. I already cut my hand on it once. Um, said you never know what you're going to run into. But anyways, I'm, I'm working on these pesky things right now. Okay, you see where we got it here. Got um, several blocks. And this is how high up I've come with it here. So now we're going to, uh, we should be able just to bring it right out through this side here, barring any problems. And everything is disconnected. But uh, not too bad, all things considered. Just there's always a few pesky things that you miss. There's always something that you wind up breaking unless you're lucky. But I wanted to give you all a view of this before I pulled it out of here. So the compressor's up there. Just got it bungee strapped up. It's perfectly fine. I'm just going to roll it out through this um, passenger side here. Okay, here we are out. And surprisingly, these little mover dollies will move around the engine pretty well. Pushes pretty smoothly. So, anyways, um, now that I got it out of here, I can easily work on separating this thing. Um, probably we'll just go ahead and get the transmission separated. We got the flex plate bolts already. And uh, we're just gonna get on the transmission and I'll probably just lift that or scoot it out of the way. It's not real big. Um, then we'll get this engine set aside. Not sure what parts I'll need off of it. Never know, but I hope that my engine that's coming tomorrow has a cool pack because I totally, I was trying to get my strap right here and it slipped off, so that's aggravating. But anyway, that's everything out and we're just going to work on said splitting this transmission part and like I said uh, the AC is really no problem just had to take off the alternator and stuff and so we could just leave it all connected it's no problem at all so you don't have to fuss with that so while I got some daylight I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this transmission off of here Okay, I've just been out here uh, working on this. As I said, just label stuff as you take it loose. Remember where things go. Uh, but we just basically started with a harness over here, unhooking it, and taking it from out of here, wrapping it back over here. The alternator, or starter, rather, sitting over there. <clears throat> we got uh, the studs that go back in it. I've been working on separating this out. Uh, one thing I will say, all these uh, bolts are the same, these big 18 millimeters, but at least they use big bolts on here. I like that. Um, you can definitely get a lot more torque. So, um, there's another to it. I took those bolts out and just kind of separated it out and laid it on the ground here. Um, <clears throat> and I got the engine. Just, I've got some too before it's kind of stable. You want to make sure it's stable. You know, put something under here and something under the other side so it's not flopping over on you. It's kind of kind of top heavy, so it's it's pretty steady there, like it is. Um, I don't know what I'll need off of it, so I'll keep it handy. But I'm probably gonna hook the lift up to it and set it over out of the way off my cart because I'm gonna be needing that. But mainly, main thing I got my. Uh, transmission over here said just um, label everything <clears throat> it's 
pretty self-explanatory. You know, we're not using the engine, so we're taking the harness, putting it over here, leaving it on the transmission, and then we'll hook it back up to the other engine. Now, it's not a bad idea to wait until you got your engine. <clears throat> that way it's fresh on your mind. You can just take everything loose, you swap it back. So there's no confusion, but I wanted to go ahead and get this transmission off of here today so I could at least say that I've got that much done. So anyways, um, that'll be all we get done for today. Just do some picking up and said the engine will be here tomorrow sometime. Um, I'm about, th I'm three days into it. Uh, it's one of those days, uh, was a partial but you know it's about about par for about four five days just depending on how much trouble now if there's stuff that i need it's going to take longer you know depending on how much prep work because sometimes i can spend a day just on the engine prep work if i have to hunt down parts and pieces and and everything like this um this piece hooks to the back of your water pump got about it runs around here and hooks to the transmission so you need to disconnect that. There's like a bolt in here, and there's one little one on the back side of that transmission there. You'll need to take that loose. It's just a little, little, little bolt right there. You need to take that loose to separate that. But this was broken. You see, when I took the bolts out, it was just disintegrated. So. This pump was just leaking everywhere. It was leaking from the front, leaking, I guess it was leaking from the back. I don't, it's just completely gone. I, th I would think more would be coming out of here though because that wasn't even attached. The piece is just broken and rusted completely off. So, uh, anyways, we'll just, we'll have to keep this one because we don't know what, what we'll need. So we may need the exhaust manifolds, who knows? Who knows what the engine, Sometimes they don't come with everything, but I'm hoping that it's a good one. It comes with all this stuff So anyway, it's gonna do it for this evening Okay, so I just got the engine in <clears throat> I'm gonna have to swap some stuff over these Heat shields are actually worse than the ones that were on the other one and they were pretty bad So I'm gonna have to swap those over And uh, Unfortunately, this one did not come with the coil pack, so I'm going to have to hunt one of those down or order a new one. So, um, anyway, everything uh, looks okay other than that. I'll probably go ahead and remove this EGR. And get it out of the way because I'm going to need it out of the way later. Surprisingly, the pipes and stuff, all these actually are in pretty good shape, which is kind of amazing. The um, oil pan took some damage, so I'm going to have to look at the other one and see which one's better. I think the other one's better than this one, but I can put a gasket on there after it's in the vehicle. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> I'm going to have to drain it or change the oil it's always a good idea but definitely I want to deal with that plus it's leaking um, even this one's got a hundred and thirty seven thousand on it but the oil pan is leaking definitely want to get that it looks like the valve cover gaskets may be leaking a little bit too so I may may or may not mess with those, but if you're gonna do them, it's now is like definitely the time to do it. They're easy to do while it's here, and it looks like it is leaking pretty good, so we may have to go ahead and do that. Because this one back here is pretty bad. So yeah, it looks like we will be doing those after all. So that's gonna be another step, and I definitely can't <clears throat> I can't put it in until I get that done, at least the rear one, because there's just no getting to that with it installed. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to see about getting some of those maybe and swapping these heat shields over. Um, 
this little plug right here was completely rusted off. I've shown you that, and this is a weak point in my opinion. This is a like cast aluminum, but they got this cheap little metal plug for the for the uh, hose coming around there and that was completely rusted off on that other one so that's probably what had caused the main failure because it had to be just pouring out of there so uh, yeah like if unless you know how to fix that you're going to be replacing this whole front timing cover if that's rusted off and it's completely rusted off I don't know if I was showing you that yesterday on the other one but I'm going to swap a few things over. I'm probably going to go ahead and put my wires on as well because I don't want to be fooling with that. And I'll just temporarily put the broken <clears throat> coil pack up here. There's a couple of, of uh, tins, I think, going in there. But then the um, power steering reservoir is bolted up here, so that has to be removed to be able to get to that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so here's these these little eight millimeters. They just go into this intake, and we'll take those out, and then we'll remove this reservoir, and we'll just kind of move it to the side. We've got a hose right there, back in. We'll need to move, or just slip it down here out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish removing that piece. Okay, you see what my extension is? There's actually a studded 10 millimeter that's right directly underneath this reservoir, and we're gonna have to get to that and get that nut off before we can remove it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that loose. Okay, there's that little 10 millimeter that was under there. So this should be loose. I'm just gonna pull it down. And I'm always saying this, but Unless you're labeling, put your bolts and stuff back to where they go as you're doing it. Okay, with that off, I'm going to go ahead and take these two 10 millimeter nuts here and here. And we're just going to swap this over temporarily so I can get all my wires attached to it. And that way, when I get another coil pack, I'll just come in here and take this out and and simply uh, swap the wires onto it there and this will tell you where these go if you look on here so there's no confusion so two four six and then one three five on the front side there okay only thing left is the locking clip and then disconnecting the coil pack plug right here Okay, in case you need to know these studs, which were removed from here, uh, to get those you need an E6, just an external Torx. If you don't have a set, uh, you know, it's not a bad, bad idea to get one because a lot of these newer cars are using those external Torx for the bolts, so it's good to have a, a set of those. I think I got the set for like 10 or $15. But to come in handy, you can use, um, a socket for these but then you kind of run the risk of stripping them they'll just go down and that nub right there and bottom out so I'm just putting those back in here so I can mount this piece and you notice this here doesn't look good either so I'll swap that off the other engine because I know the other one was in real good shape and didn't have any rust pretty much anything that looks bad and you know like these are just going to be rattling if you don't deal with these or at the very least take them off it's going to be rattling and driving you crazy so and if you can't uh, do anything else wire them down I've done that before to stop the rattling I'm putting just a tiny dab of some anti-seize or some bulb grease on this because these were just ridiculous getting these off of here they did not want to come loose so I got these marked wrong here but this is actually the two four six so don't pay any attention to that i just had it had marked it wrong i was looking at the engine wrong but this is the side to the left this side will, will be your two four six your evens 
and then the other side, uh, which would be near the firewall, will be your odd. So should be like that. Okay, just getting ready to put the one off the other engine. You can see it's in better condition than that. It's not great. It just has the two bolts here. And this one was rusted out on both of them, but that'll be enough to hold it from rattling. And then I've got the other sections that go on the other part. And like I said, the ones that are on here just completely disintegrated. So these will be better than nothing. I just torqued these to 25 foot pounds. You can feel that's pretty solid. So now I just got to get the one on the other side and really can't get to it. Uh, the way that it's setting right now so I'm going to have to get this thing lifted up so I'm going to probably go ahead and change this piece here over next and just give it a look over because you definitely don't want to miss anything while it's out here and then get it in the vehicle and have to be fighting with something so definitely want to give it a good look over and figure everything out out here okay so I hunted down some other little bolts and I'm able to get three in here and that's plenty solid enough and just douse them down with anti-seas any of this stuff when you put it back together because hopefully the next time you'll be able to get them off without too much difficulty so what else did I do I swapped over this little piece here this thing had been laying down as soon as I moved it, coolant started coming out of it, wouldn't you know? Even though it's supposed to be drained, we we'll never get all out of there. Um, anyways, I guess now I'm going to see about getting some valve cover gaskets at this point and go ahead and get to work on those. And uh, the oil pan gasket I can do later. And I need to go ahead and remove this. we have seen how I did that on the other one. A couple tens, a couple eights up here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. So I'm going to need that out of the way. Okay, so I got the valve cover off over here. These uh, are just flattened out. Just leaking really bad. The back's the real problem. You know, you want to definitely make sure to get this one. So I got that one off there. These uh, bolts are all no good. I'm gonna have to use my other valve cover pieces because the bolts, unless I wanted to take the time to pop these out and I'd rather just go get the other ones. So I'm gonna be doing that and swapping these over because none of these bolts are any good. And they're all rusted. I haven't used vice grips on some of them. And this side over here is worse. These are really rusted bad. Listen back in here, I'm gonna have to use a swivel to get to that one back in there. But I was able to get the rest of them. So I'm gonna get the ones off of the other vehicle and just swap them over to here. Just because these bolts will just be nothing but problems down the road. Okay, I wound up actually swapping these bolts over because the, um, the old, um, valve covers on the other end actually melted a little bit in places had gotten so hot but the bolts actually popped out of there real easy <clears throat> I had to order some valve cover gaskets so I'm gonna be waiting on them a little bit today so I'm kinda held up I can't do much until I get these um, these valve covers on but at least I've got the uh, the good bolts swapped and and got these cleaned up and I'm just kind of like going over everything just prepping like I said you can waste a day just on prepping and fixing things and replacing things and stuff like that and there's also a tube that goes yeah, I don't know where it's at at the moment but there's a tube that goes right here that we probably need to go ahead and get in place Cap doesn't want to come off there. 
we're gonna get that in place it has like a little bracket I think that goes uh, it goes to a couple different places here we'll get it I think we'll get it on here next because we need to kind of have that in there so we ain't doing that in the vehicle and this pipe is kind of questionable but I really hate to have to order one it's got a lot of rust on it ideally if I could just grab one real quick I would probably put another one on there because it's got some rust I'm definitely not going to be using this I got a lot of old uh, hose and stuff and heater hose it's probably some right there and we'll definitely definitely we'll take and change out that piece right there and that's just going to go back under here to that and it clamps looks like right there after it attaches and then this end comes around and attaches actually that transmission so actually we are going to have to hold up on this till we get the transmission together because I'm just thinking about that but I need to go ahead and find another piece for this while we're at it and maybe I'll go ahead and uh, get that put on here okay I got my power steering unit I was just getting ready to place it on here we just got three bolts and then we got a clamp that goes right there and I'm just going to go ahead and set that in place. I like to use uh, Loctite on these, that uh, especially like the uh, power steering pumps and stuff. That a lot of vibrations. Yeah, I have seen those things vibrate their way out. Okay, just uh, getting ready to put these valve cover gaskets on here. And uh, here's the part number that I got. I don't know if I was talking about this earlier, but this hose, I put a new hose on here and I'm using these screw clamps, just the 5 8 um, because for one thing, this hose, the clamp that was on there was a little bit looser and if, even if it wasn't, I wouldn't trust those because I have seen where they would leak. Uh, I don't normally mind them, but in a difficult place like this is, no way I want to be going back in here having to fix a leak after I get everything together so I want to make sure it doesn't leak and these here won't leak and they get a lot tighter okay so I cleaned these up a little bit with some purple cleaner just so they wasn't quite so nasty and nothing to these I believe they are both identical um, but I could be wrong But the ones that came off of here, the, um, hold on one second. Okay, so they, they push, push in there quite snugly. <clears throat> the, um, the old ones that came off were just as hard. I mean, they, they felt just like the plastic here. So, and that engine was 137,000, so. I figured that after a hundred it's all she wrote but got some new little grommets for the bolts I don't know if I'm gonna use these or not the ones on there felt okay but we may slap them on there but I'm gonna go ahead and so get this on both sides I just took and wiped this down here up a little bit so nothing wasn't that dirty. I'm going to slip that one in there and we'll get to work on that other side. Okay, so I'm just slipping this one on the other side. See how it's like just a rounded and it has the groove. And at first I thought it was something was wrong, but it, it just it fits in there really nice and snug. No danger of these falling off. But this is the nature of valve cover gaskets they last a little bit and once they go brittle it's just like you've got nothing there and all that oil just starts pouring right down onto the exhaust so we're going to go ahead and 
get this one placed on the other side and hopefully so it took me all day to get these ordered hopefully I can get something done with what little bit of daylight I have left and I'm gonna go ahead and get my bolts over here and take a look at them okay these are all pretty easy with exception of this one up in here I'm using a, a little quarter inch swivel to get to this one you kind of need it for this one here but not so much mainly it's this one right here you need a little swivel so it's got a little eight millimeter um, these don't have to be that tight I'm going to tighten these to like 80 inch pounds and that's good enough be surprised how easy it is to strip these are little these are little bolts um, doesn't take much to get them cross threaded and doesn't take much to uh, mess your threads up or mess the bolt up so they don't have to be that tight to hold this down okay we got a, some valve cover gaskets on there like I said we'll get the oil pan gasket once we get it in the vehicle it's not any easier to do it out here unless I had it on an engine stand and flipped it around but anyways we got one of the leaks took care of very important and also very difficult to get to in the vehicle without taking all this intake and stuff off so it's a good idea to go ahead and do those like $22 for those gaskets and uh, I've got it just sitting here it's actually pretty sturdy a couple of two befores just down here on it's just to kind of keep it stable and I've just got the uh, transmission here just been kind of dragging it around on the cardboard I'm going to go ahead and get it into position put a little bit of grease on here just looking at this rear seal it doesn't look to be terrible <clears throat> so anyways we just got those bolts and stuff to put back in the transmission it's not a whole lot and uh, we'll get it back on to our dolly here and uh, hopefully get this thing slid under the vehicle so we'll see what we can get done so I've spent all day just waiting on gaskets and stuff and that's just the way it is sometimes okay we should have five of these big bolts that's excluding the starter and um, the other bolts for the cover you see there it goes on like the brace and the cover but five main bolts we're going to be putting in one Let's see, maybe six, two, three, four. Okay, we have six here, but I think that the other one may be on the engine there. But anyways, or it could be the starter bolt because I'm, I've just got five big ones here. We'll get these in here. All these are the same, so it doesn't matter. Um, another thing you want to be careful about is these threads you want to clean these out and make sure that these are going to work good uh, we will be lock tightening these in but we don't want to have a problem when we go to bolting this up and figure out that hey we can't get the threads into the the engine because this thing's been sitting around and gotten rusty so we're going to check that out real quick okay just slide it up here on this cardboard now the engine is just a little bit lower where I've got it here so what I'm gonna do is just slightly tilt this engine forward and I'll probably even try to get one bolt on the top just barely started just so it doesn't come back apart but I just have to lift this up just a little bit like maybe maybe an inch or so other than that it's the way that's sitting here it's actually pretty good I put a little board here to raise this side this heavy side up so it evened it out 
but uh, you can just like work this around by hand with it down here it's really not that difficult it's just a matter of getting this engine tilted to the right angle and then once we get a couple boats in then it's we're home free okay i've wiggled this side up there no so i don't have the alignment peg in there yet but run the bolt down by hand don't try to use a wrench just yet so i've got that side and i'm going to do the same thing right here so this is the part where the alignment dowel you can see the engine's a little bit a little bit low on the side but i can rock this a little bit by hand to get it to line up okay just rocking it and using a board kind of as leverage it just popped right in on this side so i've got the alignment bolt so i'm just going to be using medium loctite and uh i'm going to be torquing these down to 45 foot pounds Okay, uh, another thing I want to point out um, before you get too far, if you have spun your torque converter out any, make sure you turn that clockwise. Make absolutely sure that it's seated. Um, because once you get all this bolted up, and if you can't turn the crank out here, then you didn't have your torque converter seated properly. So just make sure of that. So I'm just snugging up these two dowel bolts, and I'm going to work on getting these others. So just medium lock tight. Putting these in the top here. Okay, I realized that one bolt I was looking for is on this motor mount, the front middle mount that goes right in there. We'll put that on last though. See, it has the big bolt that comes up there, and then the two that come down into the sides. But we'll put that on. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to go back and look. I think this wire may go in behind that too. But anyways, I got all these up here and I got the ones with the, that's going into the locating dowels. I'm just getting ready to torque these down. I'm gonna go 45 foot pounds on these. Okay, we're putting this coolant pipe back on. Like I said, I'm using a little screw clamps and I got another little piece of hose And I'm fixing to slip that on. I got a bolt going here. And then we got a little bolt going right over here. Okay, I guess at this point we need to work this harness back around into position. And then once we get that, we'll, we'll be able to get it. Up on the dolly there, I need to get the harness back in the position and get this mount over here back on. I believe we've about got everything that we can get. I'm just kind of checking over things other than the wire. I'm gonna, hopefully this is going to go smoothly, but we may run out of daylight here today. And I'm about to get the starter back on here before I start this harness. There is a place right here, this ground goes. It goes on to this studded, I believe it goes on to the studded part there. So we're gonna go ahead and get this up into place. And then you got the little little gasket that goes on there as well so we're just going to set it in there just like that i'm going to put medium loctite on these starter bolts as well okay so just tighten up the nut on the ground there and the starters all in we'll just get to connecting the starter wire and this little clip kind of work our way around and if we do get something out of order we can always fix it so we're gonna, but we're gonna try to make sure that we don't get anything out of order here. Okay, so the 13's on. We clipped on our yellow wire. We just got this oil sensor 
and they leave the old ones on it's a good thing because it um, keeps debris and stuff out of here okay so we've got that this goes up to the the uh, alternator and uh, we got to get this routed back in the manner that it was and I do believe that it was running through like so hence this little zip tie and I need to get another zip tie for that right there but that tells you kind of where things are going and this is kind of routing up here behind this this is the old I need to get that off there and connect that and then we'll connect these over here so we're getting there it's all pretty self-explanatory so the main thing is to get it routed back where it was because if you don't uh, next thing you know you got a belt rubbing on something and then you got problems Okay, that's about everything we can get for the moment. So I made the connections over here. We still have a few more connections. Um, we're gonna go ahead and get this bracket, or this mount on here now. And just I've got the bolts on it already, so we're just gonna go ahead and mount that up and get it in place. Okay, so there we go. We got the little clip for our wire going right there in that spot. Just getting that top bolt. We got our other two. I'm gonna get down here, put a little medium lock tight on those as well. Okay, I've got the the wires where I want them for now, and everything the way that I need it. Got the mount on, it's tightened down. I went uh, 45 on the big one and. 40 on those little ones and so we're ready I got a strap rigged up I want to try not to break anything else here and get this lifted up on to my car and try to get it set in the way I had it before and we're going to get it back under the vehicle here before it gets dark it's probably going to be all I get done today it's going to get dark quick and uh, I have to get it back on it and said I'm still I'm gonna have to hunt down a coal pack uh, probably just gonna go find one at a salvage yard and still got to do the oil pan it's leaking like a sieve under there so I'm gonna have to get that uh, we'll get this onto the dolly next okay so there we are sitting nice and solid and all we have to do is just scoot it back over under here and of course we'll come back when we got a full day and uh, we'll just start lowering everything back down uh, the main thing is I just don't want to make sure that I hadn't forgotten anything so anyway everything's looking pretty good and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just roll it. All I got to do is roll it back under the vehicle. But it sets on this little little dolly really good. And it's actually quite stable when it's got the uh, transmission attached to it. It's uh, it's not in any danger of falling off of there. It would take a lot to get it to tip over anyway. Okay, and there we got it back underneath the car. Surprisingly, it's not that hard to push this around on this dolly. When you're out of shape like me, it is, but it's pretty pretty easy to push it in there. So, um, we're just going to hold off because it's going to get dark. And uh, we'll get started on it in the daylight so this is day four but most of the day was spent waiting on the valve cover gaskets because i did not want to uh start putting this thing together or doing anything until i had those 
as those were leaking pretty bad. And then I'll get on the, the I've got a oil pan gasket, we'll get on that. So there it is. And I said it's uh, pretty much home free. I mean, all we got to do is uh, get the vehicle lowered back down just carefully, making sure we're not going to hit anything, which we shouldn't hit anything. I don't know if I was mentioned earlier, but these uh, quick disconnects, as they're supposed to be, I could not get those things to pull out for nothing. And I had to wind up just taking a, it was a 19, and just taking those out of there, because they would not. I mean, they're supposed to just pop off. It's supposed to be a, you take the clip and then it pops off, it wouldn't come out of there for nothing. So, I had to just take those out. <clears throat> But anyway, we got it in here. We've got the hood close. At least it'll be out of the weather unless it just comes a really big storm. It should be fine. So that's going to do it for today anyway. All right, I'm just lowering this like a couple of 2x4s at a time. Now, if I had two big jacks on each side, I could just go down with it kind of at once, but I'm just utilizing the one jack, so I'm just taking a couple of two befores out, coming down, you know, about three or four inches at a time, and I also got some blocks under my jack to kind of get a little extra lift with it, but I'm just going to come down slowly, going to keep uh, working it down as low as I can get, and uh, try to get the mounts and stuff hooked up. Now, I will have to watch my uh, brake line in there and uh, we haven't really it hasn't gotten in the way but it's going to need to come down you can see it here it's going to need to come down and below like the mount and stuff so I need to watch that and kind of get that down so it doesn't get hung up so I'm just going to keep an eye on that so I'm just going from side to side and just lowering it down at this point and everything's pretty well clear okay one of the things I did forget because I took it off to get to the transmission bolts was this mount here I want to go ahead and lock tight these bolts and they just bolt right onto there take this is our bolt that goes through right there so we're just gonna get this on there uh, medium lock tight and fasten it down um, as we bring it down we'll line this up so we'll know we'll have it in the right area and then we'll just see about getting like our middle mount and our mount for the front up there so we're just going to slowly go down with it um, I don't see any problems anything really getting in the way but we'll just keep an eye on everything as we're slowly lowering it down here nothing to this okay I was just lining up the transmission mount over here I went ahead and just removed this mount there's just two 15s set it out of the way because I don't it was getting close to hitting this and didn't want to have it in the way it's not that difficult to put it back so we took that off and I'm right now I'm just kind of lining up this one and lowering it down just watching some things making sure nothing's gonna get in the way and I've got my AC compressor down there about where it's going to go and just steadily just lowering it down here at this point you can see how low I've got it over here and I'm pretty well seated you can see this mount it's kind of seated into there I'm going to try to work it around it's probably not going to line up exactly because this engine's not going to be setting exactly level as you can see but I'm going to try to see what I can do um, as far as getting this bolt started I may I may have to bring my lift over here or I may in fact just be able to lower this on down without having to drag that out I'm going to see which one's going to be easier but I'm just watching my compressor and just getting the things into place that need to be in place. Okay, I'm just getting the bolt going through this pass or this driver's fender well here. 
this point. And once I lowered this other side over here, this actually lined up pretty good. I'm just gonna snug it down a little for now. So we just got that. And I believe I'm gonna be able to put this on over here by just lowering it down a little more possibly. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that because it's just gonna save one more step. And so I think at this point I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in place, lock tight, tighten those, and then get my bolts and get ready to tighten it to this front here. And so I'm just keeping an eye on things here. Okay, right now it's just putting the two bolts in the rear of this AC compressor in the back, and I was putting the two nuts right there on the front. Just trying to get some of this here done while I've got it handy. And we're just going to continue to lower this down. Okay, I've got it lowered enough to get these bolts in. I'm going to go ahead and get some Loctite, get these started. So this is how low I've come with it and it's not exactly perfectly flat but we'll be able to bolt it down and um, once we get this side in the engine will be supported we'll lift it back up level it out and give ourselves room to get underneath here okay now we just lifted the car back up on to the blocks and there we go we've got it up so we can get underneath it and now I'm just gonna go ahead and hook this front motor mount back up and just go to reconnecting some things up here. But, um, so we need to, uh, I need to go ahead and tighten down the AC compressor. I got the bolts in, get that pipe hooked up. Um, so we got a lot of things to reconnect, exhaust, etc but um, really not anything major and I may just start up here under the hood getting all these things up here first now I do have to replace this like I said but I'm gonna come back and do that I just want to try to get everything back together as much as I can but we've got the all the hard part done the engine is in it's on the mounts it worked out even easier than I expected it to so uh, one thing I am gonna have to do is get something I can get in here to get to this belt tensioner because I was unable to do that um, and I had to wind up taking everything off to get the tension off it I'm gonna have to get something that's slim that I can get in there and get to that belt tensioner Okay, I've been working on this front center mount and I actually had to take a 3816 tap and re go through those threads on those. For some reason I could not get the bolts to go in. Okay, I said I'm gonna go ahead and start hooking some things up up here. Uh, the fuel line, we just need to push that back on. Get that back into place. We've got some coolant hoses and vacuum hoses and this one's not even down on there where it's supposed to be so I need to shove that vacuum hose down we need to get our coolant hoses and stuff back into place got one going here so a lot of tedious stuff to hook up but nothing difficult by no means we're gonna just work on some of this stuff up top for now okay you want to inspect your coolant hoses and stuff you can see right here on this upper one that it is cracked right in there so I'm not gonna be able to use this so I'm gonna have to hunt one of those I'm gonna have to go ahead and get one of those but it's important that you find these things before you get it all together. Let's go ahead and reattach in this reservoir. There is another nut that you tighten under there. It's like a 13. It is very difficult to see or get at. 
but um, I'm just going to get this mounted down. I'm going to just re I'm going to connect this heater hose for now, but I'm going to be replacing it. You don't want to start off with something like that. I don't know that it's leaking, but it's cracked right there. It's just about to start leaking. So we'll look this other one over, make sure it doesn't have any cracks. We'll probably just have to get one to get in a set. This one goes back on to this spout back here. Okay, I'm gonna get this power steering reservoir reconnected. Get the clamp, get that clamp back on there. Okay, we got this connector right here that goes back here to that you see right in there I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect that okay we got this vacuum hose <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and connect that back up here okay I'm just gonna connect this AC back and we're gonna we're gonna get those bolts up on that AC and then probably work on putting this alternator back on next okay because this hose doesn't have much of a bend to it I was able to just use some of my regular 5 8 heater hose and get that to work over there okay so I got my alternator hooked up got all the bolts snug down I've just started working over here feeding wires through so I got these fed back down through here. I'm gonna go ahead and start reconnecting these to this computer box here. Oh, and also I went ahead and I snapped this back on to the shifter and I just slid this back in here first and those little flare snapped out and then just popped that on there. I put a little white lithium just to make it pop on easier. Okay, so I've got my four computer Harness is hooked up there. Got a couple here. This connector, this is two different wires that come down in here. This one goes to the number one on the computer, and then the other wire goes to the other three. Got a connector down there. We got one more that goes to the horn, but that horn was broken. I'm going to leave that off for now. Okay, I was just resetting this cruise control here. We've got a vacuum place. I just put a little wit lithium on here to get it to go on a little bit easier. So that's on there good. And then this is gonna run around and over to there. So uh, we also got a piece to get off of the other engine that was removed there. Now this will go onto the little battery tray. There's a little vacuum box on there. Uh, the nut will be on the battery tray. So we're just gonna go ahead and secure this 13 right down here. Now I'm not gonna be putting the battery tray in until I'm got everything else done it'll just uh, limit my visibility but we'll go ahead and get this fastened down and we'll work on securing these cables over here okay now this other vacuum tube was the booster I had removed that because it was in the way earlier but it just goes right there and then up to that booster okay we've got this little clip that goes down on this reservoir and clips these cables up here together. And then they're just gonna feed right through here. And I had a mark, of course, which one was the front so I didn't get them mixed up. But these just uh, snap in here. Just push them back and snap them into place. Okay, looks like I've got it twisted backwards. Okay, so there's that one. And then I've got to push this one in.
Okay, so there's that one. Now we'll get these cables back in. Okay, so now we're going to reattach our cables here. I'm just going to spin it around. And slide it through. There's the first one. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I've got my 15 here. I'm going to get under here and get to work on this flex plate. I'm going to be rotating it around. I've got some medium Loctite. I've got my 18. So we're going to get our little, our little bolts. And we're going to get these in. Okay, so there I've got our four little bolts. We're going to go ahead and crawl under here. And it's looking like I'm going to need to raise this up a little more. I just don't quite have it where I need it to be crawled under here. So I think I'm going to do that first. Okay, so I just turned that first one right here and until I got it to line up. Can't hardly see the threads. I can't really get an angle at it, but it's lined up right there. I'm gonna go ahead and start that one. Put my medium lock tight and just uh, thread it down by hand until I get it uh, a little bit snug down and then I'll rotate it. I'm not gonna get them tight until I get them all in there and uh, run down real good. Okay, so I'm just in here with my little snubby 18 millimeter now I know I'm not going to be able to torque these so I'm probably just going to snug them down without removing the oil pan I wouldn't be able to get my torque wrench in here but these only need about 25 foot pounds <clears throat> they're not very big bolts so you could probably use a little crow's foot but I'm always worried about rounding these things off more than anything so I think I would just soon snug them by hand as opposed <clears throat> to doing the um, crow's foot but you don't want to have any of these tight you want it to be slightly loose because it's gonna give you alignment issues when you go to putting the other ones in so make sure they're not tight okay so I got all four loctited and installed I'm just going to go ahead and start snugging them down real good here one at a time while holding the socket, the 15, on this here to keep it from spinning. Okay, right now we're going to go ahead and get our cover that goes on here and our brace. So we've got a little cover that goes over this with the two, two tins. And uh, then we got our brace with the big bolt that goes in here. And it also bolts to the back up here. We're gonna go ahead and get that into place next. Now this thing here, if you've noticed that, that is not on the other engine. It's just got a freeze plug. I don't know exactly what this is, but this one came out of a, <clears throat> um, well, I believe it was exactly the same. It could have been a caravan. I'll have to look but anyways the engine over there does not have that so I'm not worried about that okay so I'm gonna start off with my little brace here get this up in a position and get our two little 10 millimeters right there okay and we're gonna get our brace we've got the two bolts up here the little smaller one back here and then we got that one going right into the transmission there. So we'll go ahead and get this brace fixed up here. Okay, so the two 18s over here, this 18 is snug down and this 15. This uh, pipe kind of gets a little bit in the way on doing this one, but you can get it. So looks like we've got this back here uh, as far as the brace goes. So... Um, I'm going to take a look and see. Now I got a connector here that I need to probably see about getting connected to where it goes here eventually. Um, I think that 
we're going to try and work on the subframe. I'm trying to go through a checklist of what I need to do, but I'm thinking that we may go ahead and work on, well, no, I need to get the exhaust here. And I need to get my exhaust back on its hangers as well because I pulled it off there to get it out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and just get back here and slip it back onto those rubber hangers first of all. There's nothing to that. And then I'm going to get it up here. I've got, I scrounged up some bolts and I'm just going to douse them down with anises. <clears throat> and I've just got some bolts that were about the same size length and a, a nut that'll fit it. And I'm just going to run them through there and uh, said put some anises. I thought about getting some stainless steel but I don't feel like running to have to get them so I'm just going to go back with some bolts that I have. Okay so I got my exhaust back onto its hangers back there. I'm just putting these bolts in. Like I said I put uh, anises on these bolts. Just running the bolt in that way. The nut on the back side slowly Tightening it down. There's not a lot of clearance, so you got to kind of push the bolt through a little bit and then on these top ones here. But I'm just holding it with the 13 and just tighten it up with another 13 on this side. These don't have to be just really tight, you know, probably 25, 30 foot pounds if you want to torque them or just snug them down. Oh, and I forgot to mention, make sure to put your gasket back in. I'm just reusing the one that was there, it was just fine. So make sure your gasket is in between there and that exhaust manifold. Okay, if your uh, clip for your O2 came undone, clip it back on right there. I'm going to go ahead and make this connection while I'm here. If I need to disconnect it for some reason, I can always take it back loose. So we're going to... Um, We've got our exhaust, so we're going to go ahead and get on this subframe here next. Um, we only have like four bolts to put in for it, and then the we have the bolt coming through this mount, and then of course getting our steering column up in there, so it's really not a lot. This canister has to be... Um, <clears throat> kind of uh, I have to take it loose and put it inside of the uh, the subframe there so um, I just pop the hose off and put them back just because it doesn't want to fit through there other than that there's really nothing that should be in the way we've got our our hoses and stuff here it's going to be going back onto the rack and pinion so I think I'm going to go ahead and just uh, work that over here. Um, I just do like the engine. I put it on my little dolly and we'll wheel it over here and then we'll just slowly start pushing it up into place where these bolts are going to go. Like I said, there's only four main bolts holding it. <clears throat> okay, a um, little mishap here getting these rotors off now. If you remember earlier these things were stuck on I mean these were some of the worst I've ever seen in my life this these were really stuck I definitely think this is uh, I've been up north a little bit because <clears throat> this is pretty typical up there but uh, I'm not used to this um, so I was knocking this rotor off with my rubber mallet and the whole bearing hub flew off as you can see so I'm gonna to have to get some more bearings but luckily these are just the bolt-in type you see I took those four 15s out of there and now I just have to contend with getting this out because this is stuck too um, the one over here I was actually able to knock it off but it ruined the bearing um, these 160,000 miles these things probably weren't too good to begin with but um, when stuff is stuck like that, I mean, I put penetrating, they've been soaking for days, for days and days, and it still would not come off, so sometimes there's not much you can do. And this one 
that knocked the hub off I had to take it out here and set it up on these boards and take my socket to knock the hub out of there I mean it was stuck that bad so it took that and my big mallet to get it out of there so anyways what I'm doing I'm gonna work on getting these out so these are corroded in here as well so I'm trying to knock it out from the back side so I'm just gonna be hitting it and trying to knock it loose and hopefully get it out of here worst case um, if it doesn't want to cooperate I'll go ahead and take it off of the ball joint there but I definitely I want to try to get these uh, wheel bearings back on and hubs back on once out here it's just gonna be more work doing it inside the vehicle so that's what I'm working on before I can put this in okay I've just been uh, working on putting these bolts back into this little brace that goes on the subframe I didn't need to take those out anyway because it wasn't going to allow me to get the engine out without removing this whole unit <clears throat> so don't take those out uh, also got finished knocking these out and these were really stuck almost like they were glued in there had to use a big socket and beat those out of there and I took and cleaned it up a little bit so when I get the new ones hopefully they'll go in easily and I had to order some some hubs so I'm gonna go ahead and um, <clears throat> put the subframe in It'd be easier to you know install them out here but I don't want to be waiting around now I will tell you that if you have to remove these hubs in the vehicle you're gonna have a time you'll be better off to just take the knuckle off and take it out and probably get them off there because I was having to uh, knock them out of there with the hammer I mean it just usually you can just kind of wiggle them tap them a little bit and they'll come out these weren't coming out <clears throat> nothing has been coming apart though the rotors were stuck the um, the hubs were stuck and uh, so it's just been the way it is on this one so I, anyway I'm, I've got those bolts back in so I'm going to go ahead and work this subframe back underneath and uh, work on getting it put back in here now. And I've got it on my little dolly. I'm just going to roll it back under and we'll use the jack. Start lifting up. See we only have, we just got these two bolts and then the bolt <clears throat> that's going through here on this motor mount. And then of course we'll make sure that that goes up into the uh, where the steering column is. But as far as this uh, power steering rack removal you'd be better off just removing the subframe it's just way easier to get it out here and replace that it looks like to me that's how I would do it okay so I just went ahead and uh, raised up a little bit more to make it easier to get this steering column piece in there so I'm just fixing to get my jack underneath here and just start lifting it up and get these two body mounts just gonna set them in there <clears throat> and we'll get one side started and then I'll just go over to the other side and get it started and then we'll get the bolt into the the motor mount and uh, we'll worry about this little canister vacuum canister once I start getting it lifted up here so uh, it's all I've done just wheeling it in here it's a uh, not very difficult it's just it's just really hot today is the only thing making it kind of unpleasant okay so I'm just gonna hold this side with jack stands while I get on the other side and lift it up and then we'll start working these body bolts in okay so I'm getting the first 21 millimeter bolt in here and you can see it turning in there this is the very first bolt once I get one in then I can kind of line the others up. I'll start with this one back here. I've got it in there started, but it's not lined up. So I want to make sure that I get it lined up. And then I'll go over to the other side. But um, so far, this is going pretty smoothly. I'm not going to get it tight. I'm just going to pull it up where it's just kind of a little snug okay um, don't forget to slip this back in and get your little bolt 
this little brake line brace. So I've got both of my front ones kind of loosely into place and I want to just work on the back. So I'm going to go take a look at this center mount too and make sure that it looks like it's okay. Because before I get everything tied and I probably want to make sure I can get that bolt through there. Now this center mount back here is real tricky to see, but I'm going to reach up in there basically and try to get it lined up as best I can slip that bolt through there but you just kind of have to reach up above all this and uh, you can also get it from the back side okay now I'm working on this rear one over here on this passenger side okay and finally we're over here on the driver's side once you get like really two of them and the other ones just go in real easy So, um, I'll go ahead and snug these down a little bit and I'll recheck my motor mount. Okay, so I was working on getting these lines in here. I probably should have tightened them before lifting this completely up, but it'll be all right. I'll get them. And I was putting this little cooler for the power steering back and it's got like a little nub up here on top that kind of sets into this and you get a screw in it here but it's going to set down here like this and these lines here we'll get these we'll get these clips fastened back where they go <clears throat> so it's kind of like a puzzle but Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and tighten these lines up here down. Okay, so I finally got those tightened up. It would have been way easier with it lowered. It's a slow process getting in there. And the bottom one went a little bit easier than the top one. But now that we got that, we can uh, start fastening some stuff up here and get our cables where we need them. Okay, I realized after fastening that down, I had this line in the wrong spot, so I had to remove it and put it back on. So, it should look something like that. Yeah, I've got this to fasten and this to fasten under here. So, I don't get those switched up like I did. Okay, first thing, we're going to get the bracket on here. And then I'll get the other piece up in there and clip it down into place. Okay, I'm just uh, resetting this canister. We got the bolt back here. We've got the little bolts that go up on the subframe. And I just left them in place. So I'm going to go ahead and fasten this canister up here now. One thing I will say is mount this canister bracket before you put the subframe up because it is like impossible to get to these bolts that they have on here. So make just make sure you mount it before you ever raise it up. This has been the hardest thing to deal with is this stupid canister here. So I want to work on finishing this up got another bolt for some reason it ain't even lining up back here so don't know what moved doesn't appear to have much slack okay so i got my little rubber bushing back under this here and got that bolt in so now we're going to work on just hooking up the rest of this stuff to this canister here okay i'm uh, getting ready to put some new wheel bearings on here. I've been having to take and clean the inside of this out real good. And I was using a just a putty knife, just scraping. So I don't know if this is like just corrosion or they put glue. You can see all this stuff coming out of here. And uh, the other side took quite a bit to get it to fit on here properly okay now this one's going on fine so 
I'm going to take and uh, get my bolts, put some medium Loctite on them. Tightening these down to 55 foot pounds. Just coming through the back there with my bolts. So I wasn't expecting the the old bearings to come apart. I wasn't expecting the rotors to be stuck the way they were. But everything on this vehicle has been rather difficult. It's been a lot of corrosion and rust and seem like there's been a lot of problems. So I'm going to go ahead and get my torque wrench over here and just start torquing these down. Just kind of go from corner to corner. So I got the canister and all those hoses hooked up. So do yourself a favor and definitely connect to those when that subframe is out. All right, we'll just go back and double check them. Okay, so there's our nice, nice new bearings on here. All right, I think the next thing that we're gonna do is get on these CV axles. Okay, I was just putting this passenger side CV axle in and I don't know how easy the drivers will be but I'll just push this in by hand make sure to put a little transmission fluid on there before you go in with it just getting ready to slip it into the to the hub here said you want to kind of support this and uh, got all my hardware and stuff on here so it wasn't losing it put you a little white lithium on there just make it easier getting it back apart the next time okay we'll go ahead and slip it back in our knuckle these are locking nuts here I'll just tap these in with a hammer and then you don't have to hold the, that on the other side there now I'll just get these started Probably gonna go about 120 on these. Okay, I was getting ready to go in with this um, driver CV axle. I remember to keep this here loose because you won't be able to fit your CV axle in there with that in the way. Because it's just, it's kind of blocking the, it's trying to hang me up even now with it loose, but I can get it. Give me one second. Okay, so you have to start out up here, coming from up this, this direction and go down, kind of angle it down to be able to get in there. Otherwise, it will not fit through here. You have to angle it in from the top and then work it down. Now I'm gonna see if this one will push in. I'm gonna have to tap the end with my rubber mallet. Okay, 
all I did was give it a shove with both hands and it shoved right in there and bottomed out. So I'm going to go ahead and get this nut and everything off here. Okay, and I'm getting ready to just lift this up into this knuckle here. We've got it slid in there with some white lithium. Now I will say it's easier to get the bottom one in first and then get the top. Again, we'll just tap these in and then get our nuts started on this side so they're not spinning. And go ahead and fasten this back in before we forget that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get my axle nut and my washer here. I've got these two fastened. Okay, then we got a little, little spring. We'll put this on where it lines up the best with our, our cotter pin. Go ahead and slip this cotter pin in there and bend it over. Okay, and there we have that. And I think we'll go ahead and get our, uh, let's see, we'll go ahead and put our little stabilizer link back in here. And remember, you have to hold it with the Torx in here while you turn this nut okay with that tightened down i think we'll go ahead and get our outer tie rod back in and then we'll work on getting the rotor tightened down here okay i torqued that down to 45 foot pounds by the way now i think we're going to go ahead and get this rotor on here and we'll get our brake caliper back into place. We'll be using some medium Loctite on these bolts that come through here. Okay, working on putting my brake caliper back on. I was going to just put the whole thing on and then I like touched the pads and everything just started falling apart because it's so old. But uh, So I took the uh, caliper off there and I'm just putting it back together. Yeah, I seem to have lost my other brake pad here somewhere. So yeah, these things are just completely, completely gone. I'm going to have to get some more. But this is going to have to do for the moment. Okay, so the only thing we got left to do here is just get our wheels on to both sides here. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I got just a little bit of daylight. And... Uh, We'll uh, start up on it tomorrow, finishing it up. Okay, I was just getting ready to put this belt back on. You're going to need to get you a kit like this here. I'm going to be using this one. I had a um, my 3.8s I could get in there, but um, I got this for like $15, Harbor Freight. So this will come in handy. And you can put another ratchet or whatever in here you could even use that on this end i believe <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and get this out of the package and see if we can't get this belt back on here i was putting the tires on i put the one on the other side and i remembered i got to get the belt on before i do this so i'm going to go ahead and get this belt on at this point okay the trickiest part is just kind of looping it around that tensioner there but it's pretty straightforward it dips down below the idler around the tensioner I'm gonna push towards the front of the vehicle but I've got this long handle slipped into the end of this and I've got this on here so I'm gonna pull push it towards the front of the vehicle and just I've left it off of the AC compressor and I'm just gonna slip it on right here and everything else is on so we're going to go ahead and get it on here all right now the only thing left to do is just confirm that the belt is on all the pulleys and that we don't have anything rubbing or potentially rubbing or anything anywhere here okay another thing i didn't mention earlier your brake line has some little clips it goes in on both sides of that subframe you need to make sure that those are clipped in as well as being bolted down out here so this on here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get my wheel on out here at this point. 
Okay, I've got um, two of these 13s that I've got to get down in there that go to the top of this transmission for that brake um, bracket that goes on to where the brake lines are. So I need to go ahead and get those in. And it helps if you use like a swivel and a long extension to get to these back here. They go in a lot easier. I have this little heat shield that goes on the top of that rear mount. You see the 10 millimeter. I'm going to climb under the car, slip that over and get that 10 tightened down. Okay, I've just been uh, working on slipping that collar back down in there and putting those three 8 millimeter screws. Nothing to it. Uh, the little boot thing's kind of ripped, so I may find a replacement at the salvage yard or something later. So I'm just getting ready to slip this. Of course, that thing will pull in and out like so. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get that uh, bolt tightened up on there. We got our little fancy bolt with the little pin that goes right in the end there. We're going to go ahead and get this back up there and start tightening that 13 millimeter nut. Okay, so we got it tightened down. The pin is back in. And we're going to go out and just make sure we got everything under the hood, start putting a few things back. Okay, one thing I didn't have yet is this cable that clips down into there. And this ground that goes right here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that 10 millimeter up. Okay, so we're going to set our battery tray slash little vacuum box back in here. And this uh, hose goes back on here. Okay, so you should have your wires back here out of the way. There should, the little drain tube should be coming down here out of the way. It's not caught on anything. Vacuum hose on there. So I'm gonna have to, it looks like I'm missing this little nut back here. I'm gonna have to hunt that one down. Okay, lastly, we've got uh, one connector going to our air box here. And I've just put a little white lithium, fixing to pop it down into these grommets. So I just lifted the whole thing out. <clears throat> and we're going to go ahead and get that set down. Okay, with well that set now, we'll pop this back on. So once you get it kind of lined up in the grommets, it goes down real easily. And we've got one 10 to get back in right here. We'll snug that down. Okay, and so we got um, oil in the vehicle you'll want to tighten this here down um, the only so we need to make the connection on our air we got to get about a quart of transmission fluid back in here and we're going to have to also refill the power steering reservoir so we're going to put ATF plus four in that as well so we'll probably go ahead and do that we'll get the um go ahead and get this here filled up and then we'll also get some uh, transmission fluid in here but it looks like we've got everything else so far okay so i got about a quart like i said i put a quart in here that's going to get it to a safe range that way um, i can operate it run through gears drive it etc and i can fill it and then get it up to the proper level from there but I know I lost about a quart I've got about a half a quart in this power steering I'm going to work the air out and just add to that as needed okay so with the oil and the transmission fluid we got this filled we're ready to go ahead and start getting some coolant into the system like I said I have changed out the radiator and the hoses and everything we just want to start with all good stuff. So, and I even went ahead and I got another heater hose for back there and everything's all stuck. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start putting in the coolant. I've got a concentrated mix. We're gonna 
use some uh, distilled water and we're gonna put this so we'll put about a half a jug and then we'll go half a jug of distilled water and just till we get it filled up and hopefully we'll be cranking this up pretty quick and a lot of this air will work out before you even get it cranked up just filling it up here I've got the uh, battery connected I'm getting ready I get a little bit more water in I'm gonna go ahead and crank it up okay so I'm not sure how much this is gonna hold but I've already put two gallons in and I put a gallon of coolant and a gallon of water so I'm gonna have to get some more coolant <clears throat> actually surprised at how much this system's holding here but it probably was pretty empty okay so i have not cranked this up so we're gonna see what it's gonna do here you're gonna find out with me Okay, well it's running a little rough for starters, but it cranked up on the second crank here. I'm gonna get out here and take a look at stuff. Okay, well it's definitely running, doing a little smoking. I've got a lot of oil on the manifolds and everything, so it's probably gonna smoke for a bit. Um, but I'm gonna have to hold up and go get some more coolant and get in here before I test it out any further I've just been checking and for leaks and stuff so far no oil leaks and no no transmission fluid leaks so we're gonna keep an eye on a minute hopefully I can take it down the road here okay I'm working on <clears throat> putting this new coolant pipe back into place here I had to go to the salvage yard and get one and I will say that it's not too easy to get this thing back in here you see everything I had to take out with the cruise control and the battery and everything to be able to just get down here because there's a 10 millimeter on this side and a 15 down on the block here's the one that came out and you can see where it was rusted right there it just started just pouring out as soon as I cranked it up so anyways we got another one i'm working on uh putting this pipe we're going to lock it down <clears throat> and hopefully i'm not going to have any leaks this time okay so um with the coolant pipe back on i've got the hoses tightened up we're going to go ahead and get some coolant in here again what i drained out we'll get it filled back up and and we'll get it cranked up. Hopefully we can take it for a test drive here. Okay, so with that coolant pipe fixed, i uh, been able to get the coolant topped off. I want to say that I've got, um, gosh, close to like three gallons I think I put in there or more. And I was just mixing it half and half. But um, I've got everything um, all back together. And I went ahead and I put some new plug wires on here because it wasn't running really good. And we've uh, made sure all the fluids are topped off. So we're going to go ahead and, and take it down the road for a test drive here. Okay, so here we are taking it down the road. And uh, so, so far I've uh, drove it around a little bit. We haven't had any check engine lights or anything come on. So that's good. Now before I fired everything up, I went ahead and I did do a quick compression test on all these and I was getting like 160. So I checked that out prior before I got everything kind of buttoned up. But uh, overall it did feels, um, you know, it drives really smooth, which I'm kind of surprised because it's, you know, been kind of taken care of kind of rough it seems like with the suspension and stuff I did get some wheel bearings and and I've got to still get some brakes on this thing but <clears throat> other than that I hadn't done much to it the uh, I know the rack and pinion had a slight leak on it so I'm actually surprised that it feels as good as it does 
So, I mean, it feels like it's the engine's got some get up go to it, and seems to be driving really well. And I know, you know, it's not a bad vehicle. These um, caravans and town and countries, they actually are really. Um, smooth driving vehicles and they're actually quite comfortable you know I, I used to uh, have one I drove a lot and and you could take them on long road trips and and really you don't really get cramped up and tired like you do in most cars and stuff you know but vans actually quite comfortable to take on a road trip and everything so Anyways, we we've um, we'll take it on probably the interstate next and see how it's going to do. But so far, I'm real happy with it, and it's doing really well. And so, other than getting some brakes, and I'm going to probably put some headlights on the front of it. Other than that, it's doing really well. I'm pretty happy with it. So. This has been kind of a long project, just getting parts and stuff. Um, that coolant pipe, I got tired of waiting on a part of order, so I wound up going and grabbing another one from the salvage yard. And uh, you know, other than that, I think I've been I've spent about three weeks on this all together, which is a lot longer than I would have liked to. But I run into some difficulties and parts, and having to get other things and wait on things and stuff, and that's kind of how it goes sometimes. But other than that, um, you know, the replacement of the engine was, you know, uh, quite a bit of work, you know, getting the subframe out and everything to be able to even think about dropping it down. So it's just kind of time consuming. But, you know, not too bad. Uh, you know, if I was to do another one on this you know just like it it would go a lot quicker because it'd be fresh on my mind but you know having everything you need at the time is the is the important thing but anyways very very happy with it don't have much left to do to it so other than just getting some headlights and put some brakes on here okay so that's going to do it on this video here replacing the engine this 2006 town and country i hope you found it helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up and as always i invite you to subscribe thanks for watching